I don't see you yet, but I heard you. I knew you. <laughs> Distinctive voice. <laughs> and Janet is over in the attendees, so I'm going to move her over to panelists. And I do see Amherst Media. And here comes Janet, and we are recording. Okay. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to start. Um, welcome to the Amherst Planning Board meeting of February 3rd, 2021, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, uh, GL Chapter 30A, uh, Section 20, and signed Thursday, Chapter, or excuse me, <laughs> Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This Planning Board meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jack Jumpsack, and as a chair of the Amherst Planning Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at like 6.32 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and is being available uh, via Amherst Media live stream. Minutes are being taken as normal. Board members, I will take a roll call. When I call your name, mute yourself, answer affirmatively, and then uh, place yourself back on mute. Um, Rio Chow? Present. Tom Long? Present. Andrew McDougall? Present. Doug Marshall. Present. Janet McGowan. Here. Johanna Newman. Present. And myself, present. Uh, board members, if technical difficulties arise, we may need to pause temporarily to correct the problem and then continue the meeting. If you do not have technical issues, please let Pam know. Discussion may be suspended while the technical issues are addressed and the minutes will note if this occurred. Please use your raised hand function to, to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your raised hand and call you on you to speak. Uh, after speaking, remember to remute yourself. Um, opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment item and other uh, appropriate times during the meeting. Please be aware the board will respond to comments during the uh, general public comment period. If you wish to make a comment during the public comment period, you must join the meeting via Zoom the Zoom uh, teleconferencing link. The link is shown on the slide that is shown. Uh, this link is also listed on the meeting agenda posted on the town website via the calendar listing for this meeting, or you can go to the pl uh, planning board webpage and click on the most recent agenda, which lists the Zoom link at the top of the page. Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address yourself. Put yourself back on into mute. When finished, residents can express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the planning board chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation, uh, participation will be disconnected from the meeting. So, um, uh, also note that we're having a joint meeting with the Community Resources Committee uh, of the Town Council, and we will have them, uh, you know, enter in after we review our minutes and have a public comment period. So, um, oops, I'm getting my agenda here. So the minutes. And what do we have for minutes again? Uh, you have May 20th and January 20th. Okay. Correct? Yes. I'm just bringing those up. Uh, I, you know, I, myself, I did not get the, the, the packet today in the mail. And that was like a little discussion. And maybe, maybe we just go, you know, digital and not expect and go through the expense of sending out uh, that, but I, I did not get my packet. I don't think Maria did either. And Andrew, no, Doug, oh, so nobody got their packet nobody today. Got so, them. I, I, you know, I'm wondering, it's like, maybe we should just go digital, you know, especially with the Zoom uh, meeting, you know, platform that we're using. Um, I printed out, you know, what I needed to, so. Uh, we can discuss that later. But, um, so, so the minutes. Uh, 
I'm just opening up when I need to here. So we have uh, the May 20th, 2020 minutes. Christine Gray Mullen was the chair at that time. All right. <laughs> yes. They go back a little bit. So let's see. Um, you could vote. Janet could vote. Maria and Doug. Um, Andrew, Tom, and Johanna would abstain. Okay. I, I, so, moved, to, I moved to accept the minutes of May 21st, 19. Um, I'm no, sorry, 2020, wrong, wrong thing. Great. Uh, a second? Maria? Second. Okay. So, um, any further discussion on those minutes? You can take a roll call. Uh, Maria, approve or? Uh, I approve, but I think Doug's hands raised. Oh, um, all right. I, I have to. Oh, yep. I, I apologize, Doug. Yeah, I just thought I'd say that I, I do wait to, to get the packet usually before I review things. So I have not read the minutes that we have here, oh. but I'm scanning through them. And if, you know, maybe. So I may abstain from the voting. Okay, um, I, I kind of in, I'm in the same boat there. Um, we could put this off till next time. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, let's do that then. And so uh, let's push off the minutes then and this movement is a public comment uh, period then. Okay. I'm just going to take a peek. We do have a hand. And, 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 and let's make, if I, you know, please, the planning board members, remind me, if I forget, let's discuss this going digital versus, you know, mailing out this package, uh, especially when we're doing Zooming. Uh, I think it might really facilitate things and provide some efficiencies uh, for us. So, uh, public comment period. Oh, I see one hand out there. Pam Rooney, oh, Sarah McKee, Jerry Weiss. Okay, you want to just start at the top? Yes. Okay. Hi, Pam. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us. Um, it's a little tough. I'll just make a comment. It's a little tough to comment on things that haven't been discussed yet. So um, this is just a, a general statement that um, we had a good district presentation from Evan and Steve the other night. And what struck me in this conversation with the CRC and the planning board is that it's, it's a little murky. It's a little unclear where the bouncing red ball is at any given time. Um, I don't know the responsibilities of the CRC in, in analyzing and delving into the details uh, for those of us who want to be uh, engaged in the conversation, the roll up your sleeves and really you know, talk about the issues and talk about how to tweak things to make them good for the town. Um, it's a little tough to follow, so that's, just kind of my um, general statement, and maybe you all can clarify that tonight. Uh, in the past, we had the zoning subcommittee, and then through the zoning subcommittee, the planning board uh, to hash out those details. And literally, they would sit with either people that had brought a zoning article for consideration, or those who might. Uh, might be a stakeholder in the conversation that was that was being held, but it was very clear where one went to participate in that conversation. And I think if you all could help clarify that when you have joint meetings, it's even less clear whose ball, whose court this ball is in. So thank you, but, and thank you for your good work. Thank you. Uh, Pam, I, I just, I guess if if you could kind of like distill that into one more remark, what it exactly are, is your is your request? Because I'm I, I'm a little bit unclear. I don't know when in your conversation about the CI. I, I don't really know the role of the CRC compared to the I'll I'll call it the traditional role 
of the zoning subcommittee and the planning board who were really the purveyors and managers of zoning articles. They would work it through, they would hold the hearings, and then they would present it I to see. the meeting. So I, I get confused and I don't know which meetings to attend because I am interested in zoning. If I should sit in on all the CRC meetings in case they talk about 40 hour zoning, yes. uh, or should I only you know focus on the planning board and, and or the zoning subcommittees? Okay, I got you. So, you know, yeah, so it's a work in progress and actually our joint committee is uh, uh, addressing that, you know, that that protocol and, and our process moving forward. So that's, that's good. Love it. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. She dropped off, but we have Jerry. I did. Yep. So I'm going to ask. Um, Could I interrupt for a moment? Darcy Dumont wants to be invited into the meeting. I think she dropped off too. I just got a little text about that. I don't know, Pam, if you can see her or let her in or I'm not sure whatever magic that you do. So Darcy is not a member of the Community Resources Committee and she is currently in attendees and that is where she should be. Yeah, I think she may not be able to. Um, She's there. She just got to raise her hand. Right. Okay, for so this moment, get... Jerry Jerry Weiss yes, has been I... asked to speak. Yeah, Jerry, please. Okay, thank you. So um, I think everybody at this meeting has gotten my letter, which has a much more um, detailed explanation of my questions and concerns. And I would start by saying that the overarching concern question I have is, what, is, what are your goals for, in my humble opinion, this massive rezoning of Amherst that is being proposed? And the subset goal, Question part B is what is your evidence that such rezoning will accomplish those goals? And then my letter spells out a lot of more questions about what your evidence is for um, different aspects about how will it, how will it um, actually improve affordability? Um, how many units will it, will it take in order to accomplish those goals of affordability and inclusivity and uh, you know making neighborhoods more variable um, uh, those uh, those questions are all spelled out in the document I, you probably don't want me to read the whole thing tonight you so, know what uh, we, we have a we had an issue with the mailing of the packet so I'm not sure that we saw your document oh and Pam, do you know if that was? Um, I, I have not seen that document. So was it sent to the planning board, Mr. Weiss, or, or the CRC? Well, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I sent, it to, I sent it to the entire council about a week or so ago. And, and I'm apologizing. I only sent it to the planning board today when I heard about this meeting. And okay. nobody's fault that I didn't know about the meeting but my own. So I'm not blaming anybody. But I did. Um, send it uh, this morning, I think, to the planning board. Okay. Um, I, I could try I could try to do do a shorter version of it if you would like. Yeah, I, I just think that we we just need to see it and then I'm, I'm sure it's fine as is. you know I don't, I don't think you need to make a shorter version, but um, um, we can we, certainly forward it to the board tomorrow. We, I haven't okay. seen it. I think Mr. Weiss, if he would send it to the planning department email, then I did. Uh, okay. Hmm. I put it, I sent it to planning at amherstmass.gov. Amherstma.gov? Yep. Hmm. Sent, Jerry, sent uh, I hate to interrupt, but, but the town council got it. So I could forward what you sent to the town council on to Chris and Jack and Pam to forward on to the planning board. Okay. I don't know what happened to it, but my scent I, box I said will, it got sent. I will do that now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Mandy Joe. 
Very good. Um, and then we have, uh, I thought we had Darcy's hand up, but it's not up now. You have Ira Brick is next and followed by Janet Keller. Okay, so Ira. Okay. Hello, Ira. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, I'm Ira Brick, 255 Strong Street. I'm not gonna say anything that will be a great surprise because I've been kind of vocal on this, but I just wanna maybe put a new spin on a few of these is I know that the priorities that are being considered now are from the master plan. And though people work very hard on the master plan, uh, it is now a decade old and a lot of things have changed in the world and in Amherst, there's more housing in North Amherst on University Drive. There's you know news over the last couple of years that private uh, uh, public partnerships might put more dorms on campus and um, the changing economies of, of uh, higher education, not to mention that a lot of the priorities that are being stressed are kind of cherry picked out of the master plan, out of context of over 15 uh, stresses on character of the neighborhood. And there's been a lot of expression by the community that I think has been kind of overlooked uh, by the government making, you know, uh, less impact if it is a, you know, uh, template of a letter that still is a vote. A lot of people that don't want the tall buildings and the overly dense neighborhoods um, and also question whether we even still have a housing crisis. Um, and plus, I, something that I've recommended, there are other diagnoses and cures for this problem that I don't really feel the town is looking at. For instance, are there things that can be tweaked in the economics of student houses, changing uh, maximum unrelated uh, people in the house might change things in a way that I think I've sent you the opinion of a uh, Ithaca world famous economist that said that it worked in Ithaca. And also um, to use the consultant money that apparently is still there to create exactly what we want the entire town to look like. When I look at your version of what downtown Amherst should look like in, I think it's 2039, it's a scary vision. Um, it's more of what people have strongly expressed they don't want. And there is something that I would be fine with. I'm not anti-development, but I think that three-story buildings uh, lining the street and if people could figure out how to make those profitable and try to lure developers that would want to build New England style three-story buildings that are mixed use that would attract all kinds of uh, uh, community members to us. So I'm saying this again, a couple of new little pieces, but I just think that you are uh, being too hasty with things that could have a lot of unwanted uh, repercussions. Uh, I say that with respect. I know how hard you all work and thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Jerry's hand is still up. Mm. Pam. I'm gonna, I've just unmuted him. Jerry, did you, is that a residual hand? Yes, I'm sorry, that's a little residual hand. I'll lower my hand. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And Janet Keller? I'm gonna ask Janet. Hi, Janet. Janet, I've enabled you to speak. She's she's muted. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I too would like to know what the goals are uh, for this uh, massive rezoning for this really big um, effort um, and the framework for clarifying what results you're seeking where. When I began to dive into um, the pro CRC proposals, um, they are extremely hard to work with in the current form for, uh, for uh, 
a, a constituent, um, you have to uh, uh, we need uh, a map showing where and what results you want. Um, um, or are we to assume that you really do want to um, uh, densify even into, say, a zone like the flood prone conservancy? Is, is that your intention? Um, I, I really could use some clarity. I th think a lot of us could use some clarity here and um, would seek maps and photos that are easily accessible for us um, so that we could know what to expect. Um, and uh, also, if you would share with us uh, any um, uh, reasons that you have to believe that proposal A will result in um, outcome B. Um, so where has that uh, worked? Where has there been a problem? Where has a given proposal worked to solve that problem? Would you share that with us? And then finally, um, um, I'm looking for um, concrete proposals from um, the planning board and the council and the CRC for um, having some robust public participation on this. I was very impressed with uh, Shalini's uh, public outreach proposal for housing, but um, this is a much, much bigger task and has much, uh, much greater implications and um, really am urging you to provide robust pu public participation sooner rather than later. Thanks. So uh, Chris, do you want to speak to that? Because I, I heard some like, you know, zoning uh, or the, the floodplain issues. I know that's coming along. Um, I don't know if you want to. I would say once CRC is formally called to order, we can start addressing that as part okay. of that meeting. Very good. So we can move on to that then. Oh, um, I think Hilda's you, have, you have one more um, comment from Hilda Greenbaum. Oh, sorry. Ready? Hilda, please. Hi, Hilda. Uh, hi, how are you? I'd like to put in another plug for my favorite subject. And that's the, the new 101 page economic development document allowed the town to adopt starter housing and clustered affordable cluster developments. And I'm really pushing hard for that because this town is overwhelmingly rental housing. And there's very, and Evan, I have to thank Evan for putting this bug in my head. There's really no place anymore to put Orchard Valleys or what we used to call two Nail Tonys, uh, um, little development off East Pleasant Street back in the 60s. There's no place to put these up anymore. And, and I think only a, affordable developments can afford to do it. And I'd like you guys in the zoning subcommittee and CRC to look really seriously at getting some workforce housing here that's affordable, that can be owner occupied where the workforce of this town can build up equity in their own house. And then when they want to move up to something a little bit higher on the income bracket, they, they can pass this on to somebody else who's lower down on the scale and just beginning their, their um, working career in this town. And we really need places that people who work here can afford to live in town. And we don't have anything like it. And I think very much that the land over on Belchertown Road that you're in the process of purchasing is a really good place to put owner-occupied starter housing. And so I'm putting another plug in for that every time I have a chance, that we have enough rental. And not only do the people who buy the starter homes benefit, but the town benefits by having a stable population that lives here. 
as opposed to the overwhelmingly transient population where we go from about 36, 38,000 year round down to under 20,000 in the summertime. We need more people to have a stake in keeping this town prosperous. So that's my lecture for tonight. Thank you. So I would like to call uh, the, the CRC uh, and Mandy so she Thank can you. have her group. Thank you. Um, yeah. So it is 657 and seeing a quorum of the Community Resources Committee present, I will call uh, the CRC to order for this special meeting on February 3rd, 2021. Um, Jack did all the virtual remote participation stuff, so I will not repeat that, but I will make sure all of our members can hear us um, and we can hear them. And, and then we're gonna move right in. Um, thank you, Jack and the planning board for having us. So I'm just gonna call a roll here and I'm gonna go back down just the way I see it. Steve Schreiber. Here. Dorothy Pam. Here. And welcome, Dorothy, to your back to the CRC for your first meeting. <laughs> Thank you. I'm thrilled to be back. Um, Shalini Balmilm. I'm here. And I confused Evan Ross. Evan. Here. And Mandy Jo Haneke is here. So all five of us are here. Welcome. Um, uh, Jack and I, I believe, agreed that I will be sort of presiding over this portion of the joint meeting. I thank um, the planning department and the planning board for suggesting this joint meeting to sort of have an initial discussion about zoning priorities. And I want to I, I want to lead off with this is an initial discussion um, to start the whole process for, you know, I, I know CRC was not called to order during the public comment. We're going to get better at figuring out those two joint agendas as we do this more often. Um, but all CRC members were here for that. And we are at the beginning of a process. There aren't any concrete proposals on the table yet. Um, this is before the council has even referred anything concrete to the committees to hold the public hearings as required by law. Um, and I'm hoping tonight we'll start to uh, flesh out and and you know sort of clarify how this might work, because this is really going to be the first time these two boards and committees, along with the planning department, really delve into sort of joint efforts on dealing with zoning bylaw changes um, in, in, a, in a big way. Um, the plan for tonight's joint part of the meeting is sort of threefold. The first part is that Rob and Chris will give a preliminary status report on where they are regarding a work plan. Um, that then we as a joint group can discuss and give feedback on and that work plan will be things like what's coming first or second, what they see and, and things like that. And, and Chris and Rob will, will give a preliminary one tonight. Um, I, I do not know how complete it is um, because we had originally talked about it being more complete for the February 9th CRC meeting. So this is sort of a progress update on that. and. And it will be more, my, my assumption is it will be more fleshed out come next Tuesday at the CRC meeting. Um, after that discussion, uh, Jack and I will be updating the bodies on discussions we've had regarding collaboration and potentially more joint meetings um, and how that can happen in relationship to the work plan that Rob and Chris will be talking about and, and discussion will follow with that. And then after that, we hoped to hold some actual discussion, collaborative discussion and all on um, the challenges faced in the BL and as they relate to sort of the zoning priorities that the council uh, directed the town manager to, to sort of come in with uh, revisions for. And so that the hope of that conversation is again, a very first start of how conversations between the two committees could work. Um, and what they might look like. And for us to sort of dip our toe into that, it will by no means be the last conversations these bodies have or the last time, it's the very first time people will have to hear where we are on the challenges, visions, um, where we hope zoning changes for that area might bring us and all. And those, those discussions will continue because there, as I said, there are nothing on the table right now, despite some of the specificity of the zoning priorities that the council 
uh, directed the town manager to work on. Um, so with that, I will take, I, I see one hand. I really would like to go to Chris and Rob soon. So I will recognize Janet initially, but, but after that, we're going to move to Chris and Rob. Janet. Um, thank you. I just, I have a question, a clarification point is I thought that this um, item on the agenda was just talking about the work plan and collaboration. And so I didn't realize that we were going into the BL and I, as we learning in the zoning subcommittee is quite um, murky and complicated. And we have, you know, we've been working on maps and different um, ways of envisioning what should be in the BL. And so I, I didn't even realize that was on the agenda. And then I, Chris, Christine Brustup had sent me your memo and it looked like we we're talking more substantively about the BL. And I know there's tons of people interested in the BL issues. Um, and I know that they probably don't, if I didn't realize we were talking about the BL, I'm sure they didn't. So I was wondering, to me, it looks like it wasn't really properly noticed, but I just, I think we have enough to talk about, and I would love to talk about how we're going to work together, you know, public participation plan and all that stuff. So I just, I would, I just don't think we can go into the substantive issue that wasn't properly noticed. Um, so I just, I don't want to go into the territory. So that was, that was my, 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 my reaction to that. I was quite surprised when I read your, your, um, Memo. Thank you, Janet, for voicing that concern. The notice and the agendas all said zoning priorities. They were not specific about what type of discussion or any specificity to that. Um, and the zoning priorities list a number of things. So um, the belief is that, that that notice was acceptable under open meeting law in order to have a discussion even on the substantive matters, not just on a work plan. Um, and so so, so we will continue that. Uh, it'll all depend on though, how far we go into that on timing, because I know you guys have more stuff to do on planning board. It is the only thing noticed for CRC. We're aiming to finish all of this. I think the CRC portion in this part by about 8.30 or so, I think is what I talked to Jack about. Um, and as I said, it will not be the only time we talk substance on BL or or anything related to BL. It's a, it's a toe in the water to show how these conversations would start. So I guess, I guess my point is if I didn't realize we were talking about the BL in, in substance because it says zoning amendment priorities work plan, I don't think anyone else did. So I do think it's an open meeting law violation, but thank you. So we will start with Chris and Rob. Good evening. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, thank you for this joint meeting. Uh, we are really happy to uh, be here to start talking about zoning bylaw amendments and the beginning of a work plan. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we hope to, uh, with feedback tonight and a little bit more time, uh, really have a more concrete, complete plan for the February 9th meeting and discussion, uh, along with more details about what, what has been worked on. Uh, we have a very brief uh, group of slides uh, to go through tonight uh, to talk about these items uh, that we uh, will be working on and how we see the uh, next several weeks to go. Uh, Christine's going to start it off with Pam's assistance. Uh, Are you, re you ready person. for the slides? Ready for yes, the sir. slides. <clears throat> okay, let me just find them. Where are they? Nope, that's not them. Here. <sighs> they should be on your desktop, Pam. They are on my desktop, but they're not showing up here when I ask to share. So when I do this, can you see them? No. No. I sent them to um, Mandy, Joe, and Jack. Yep. I can try to bring them up. I got them. Hold on. Can you see it now? Yeah, go to the first slide. So this is just a little um, outline of <clears throat> how we got here and what we're doing. 
So first, um, this is really the first meeting that we've had with, um, with both bodies. It's really the first meeting we've had with the planning board to talk about zoning amendments um, since the uh, town council um, asked us to start working on them. So this is a draft work plan. May I have the next slide, please? Um, on January 4th, the town council voted to direct the town manager to present zoning amendments to the town council. And the zoning amendments were divided into two groups and assigned uh, due dates. Um, there was a phase one uh, set of zoning amendments and a phase two set. I think they were initially termed the March set and the September set. Um, so the building commissioner and the planning department assessed the list and we're working on developing a work plan to achieve the stated goals. The planning department and the building commissioner will present the work plan to the CRC, Community Resources Committee, on February 9th. May I have the next slide, please? Um, I, I wanted to review what the uh, town council asked the town manager to ask us to do. Um, in the first set of of uh, requests, there were um, dealing with the BL zoning district, the limited business zoning district, and trying to figure out um, how to allow housing to occur there. There is existing housing there, but for the most part, it's non-conforming. So how can we allow housing to occur in the BL zoning district? The second one that we have listed here is adding footnote A to maximum lot coverage and maximum building coverage. And what that means is that um, footnote A has to do with a special permit that either the planning board or the zoning board of appeals can uh, grant to modify dimensional requirements. So in this case, it would be modifying maximum lot coverage and maximum building coverage. The third one we have listed here is revising the supplemental dwelling unit bylaw. Um, and the idea is to allow a larger supplemental dwelling unit then we currently allow 800 square feet. And we'd like to be able to offer one that would be as big as a thousand square feet. The next one here is demolition delay bylaw revisions. And this is something that the historical commission has been working on for quite a while. And I think members of town council are aware of some of the difficulties with um, dealing with, with sort of uh, enforcing the demolition delay bylaw to make, it, to make it work. It really doesn't work very well in its current state. So they're working on um, coming up with a revised version and they're working with the planning department on that. And the, of course, the building commissioner. The, the f I think fifth thing here is working with town council to begin to um, talk about housing types and what kinds of housing types might be allowed in different parts of town. Currently, um, I think single family houses are allowed in all residential districts. Um, and I believe that two family houses are also allowed in all residential districts and some of them require a special permit, but we'd like to consider the possibility of allowing other types of housing like perhaps triplexes or quadruplexes. Um, so that's a conversation that we'll be starting um, sometime this year. Uh, the th Sixth one, is that right? Move apartments to site plan review in more districts. So currently apartments are allowed by site plan review in the BG general business district, but they're not uh, everywhere else. Um, a special permit is required, a special permit from the zoning board of appeals. So the idea is to make it easier to develop apartments in different uh, districts. Um, the next one is uh, remove footnote M and footnote M is we only have three footnotes left in the dimensional table, but footnote M is um, requiring, it deals with the RG general residence district and for townhouses and apartments that are built in the RG district, um, there's a requirement to have in addition to the initial lot area that's required in the RG district for each dwelling unit that you add there, you need to have 4,000 square feet of additional lot area. And the idea here is to um, eliminate footnote M so you can revert to the, um, the amount of additional lot area that you need for any other type of residential use. Um, so if you have a duplex or uh, I guess a duplex is a good example, um, you only need to have um, 2,500 square feet in additional 
um, lot area. So that's a discussion that we, we've actually started that discussion in a pretty robust way in the uh, zoning subcommittee meeting. Um, the last one here under phase one is revising the definition of apartments. So apartments are currently limited to, you, you can only have four, 24 units in an apartment building and you um, have to have a mix of units. You can't have any more than 50% of any one particular type. Um, and there are other issues related to apartments. So if you can show me the next slide, please. And uh, this is phase two. So these are things that the town council asked us to come back with by um, September. Uh, the first phase of things were things that they wanted us to come back with by March. So um, anyway, by September, the, the request was that we would deal with dimensional regulations in the general residence and village center residence districts. And for the most part, that would deal with lot area and frontage and things like that. Um, lowering barriers to development of duplexes and triplexes. So that's something that we uh, are starting the conversation in phase one, but we would continue the conversation in phase two. Um, looking at frontage regulations for residential districts, because we know that some, um, some properties, particularly in the RG district, um, are like one foot short of what they need to be uh, in compliance with the zoning bylaw, and therefore they're considered to be non-conforming. So there are things that um, need to be looked at there. The next one is look at appropriate uses for village centers. And I think this was mentioned by Dorothy Pam as being important if we're going to put more um, residential development in village centers, we really need to look at what other types of support um, uses could go there, such as, you know, little stores to buy bread or buy, you know, milk or a dress or whatever you want, wanted to buy, but not to have to go and get in your car and drive somewhere to, you know, be able to have these services. Um, the last one here is transportation issues. And generally speaking, the planning board doesn't talk too much about transportation issues. That's really the bailiwick of the Department of Public Works and the um, Transportation Advisory Committee, but there may be some things that the planning board could do about transportation issues. And the last one here is hiring a consultant to um, guide us into creating form-based design guidelines or form-based code uh, to make our buildings more um, in keeping with the buildings that are already here. So those are the things that the town council asked us to do. May I have the next slide, please? So Rob is gonna take over from here. Okay, so uh, as you saw, that's a, a pretty big list of items. Uh, and th those were the priorities uh, established by the, the council. Uh, and, you know, there's another list of priorities that uh, staff has that, you know, hasn't been uh, incorporated into that yet. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, but really what we needed to do uh, as a, a planning department staff is look at this list, look at the things that uh, we feel are necessary to uh, maybe move along with it uh, that aren't listed there. Uh, and uh, what can we put together for a work plan that will uh, be something that could be accomplished this spring and uh, possibly be ready for uh, a, a review and consideration uh, this summer. Uh, if you can go on to the next slide, please. So the, um, the, the town, as, as Chris mentioned, the town council list uh, included all these items in the first group of bullets. Uh, the BL district is uh, something that uh, not only the zoning subcommittee uh, began uh, uh, quite a bit of work on in a previous uh, couple of weeks ago in one of their uh, meeting sessions, uh, but the town staff and uh, planning staff has started looking at this in great detail as well. Uh, and we'll continue to do that and uh, you know, work together with the zoning subcommittee uh, and share thoughts and ideas as, as uh, we bring concepts together that we think are worthy of consideration. Uh, the elimination of footnote M, as uh, Chris mentioned, this is the area increase for the additional unit uh, on, on a property. Uh, is, is well into discussion and study and being analyzed uh, and, and looked at both by the sub, sub, zoning subcommittee and staff. Uh, we also uh, would like to address the apartments definition 
and the supplemental dwelling units. Uh, so this first group of council uh, priorities uh, is something that we think could be worked on uh, both by staff zoning subcommittee and be ready for uh, in, be ready for viewing, for showing a complete concept uh, of an idea in each of these areas uh, for the March 9th CRC meeting. So that in no way uh, is suggesting that a, an amendment is complete and ready to move on to uh, consideration, but it will have uh, hopefully the back up information, all the supporting documents and good idea or ideas uh, to start the process to really uh, think about a, a, an amendment uh, in those areas. Now, some of the planning department uh, uh, priorities uh, that uh, we'll all continue to work on during this time, uh, we feel go along with some of these items up above in the town council list. For example, inclusionary zoning. Uh, we think now might be the time to look at that uh, the, how it's triggered, the, the applicability of the inclusionary zoning uh, requirements, especially if we're looking at uh, increasing the density uh, in the BL district. Uh, now might be the time to look at that. So we, we expect to have uh, ideas and suggestions on how to do that. Uh, recodification, uh, this has been talked about and called a number of different things uh, as we've been uh, discussing zoning bylaw amendments uh, over the past uh, months. And really what we're hoping to do is have a reformatted bylaw with a very uh, uh, initial level of uh, corrections, uh, adjustments, uh, nothing too substantive for changes at this point uh, to get us a good, uh, uh, cleaner, uh, more presentable document uh, that uh, is, is gonna be good for all of us working forward and, and continuing to make adjustments and additions and, and changes in the future. And uh, we'll be ready to talk uh, more about that and probably even show uh, what that is starting to look like uh, in at the February 9th or shortly after uh, set of meetings. Uh, we also believe the mixed use building uh, uh, use category needs to be defined. There needs to be a set of standards that goes along with, with those buildings uh, specifically to deal with the percentage of commercial or non-residential space and how that first floor of those, the building gets, uh, gets used uh, for those non-residential uh, uses. Uh, you've all heard about flood maps in the past and then Chris did talk a little bit about demo delay. Uh, the, the Historic Commission has done a lot of great work on the demo delay, advancing that along. Staff has made uh, comments on, on their draft and will continue to work with the Historic Commission to uh, come up with a document that uh, will be ready to move forward. Uh, next slide, please. So we're, you know, we're looking at a very rough schedule at this point, but these are the group of meetings coming up over the next couple of months that uh, we think uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, talk about uh, our progress and uh, work on these, uh, these matters. Uh, a couple of meetings uh, have already occurred, zoning subcommittee, tonight's meeting, of course, uh, and we are uh, going to be uh, actively preparing for the uh, February 9th meeting to, to really finalize this, this work plan uh, talk more specifically about what, uh, what staff in the zoning subcommittee has either um, uh, realized through the studies or analysis that's occurring and possibly even talk about some, uh, some concepts for amend amendments and how to deal with some of these, these questions and issues. Uh, we've got a zoning subcommittee and the, the, the upcoming planning board meetings where uh, if there's time and, and interest, we'll be able to uh, provide updates uh, and show our progress uh, on the work we are uh, completing. Uh, the CRC meeting on the 23rd, if it's available, would be a good time to probably see uh, some of these uh, items co really come together and, and, and shape up into what a, a bylaw amendment a proposal could start to look like. Um, the uh, following zoning subcommittee and planning board meetings could be used again for, for uh, those updates. And our goal is to get to the March 9th meeting uh, timeframe with a package, a package of uh, materials that support or um, I guess um, provide background on what's being requested 
uh, uh, and, and uh, supporting information for the bet, what staff and the zoning scope subcommittee uh, and you know, the input that we received along the way during these series of, of meetings that we think is the best uh, approach for the moment and really begin that, that, uh, that, that effort to refine, uh, hopefully make adjustments and uh, with, the, with the idea, at least at this point that we would be moving those, uh, those concepts uh, further along in the process, working our way towards uh, uh, submission to the council. Uh, in planning board. Uh, so that's that's the end of our slide presentation. Uh, Chris, feel free to add anything that you think um, I, I might have uh, missed. Uh, otherwise, we can uh, certainly be uh, ready for questions. I don't have anything to add. Thank you, Chris and Rob, for that. Um, that was very Appreciate it. And I think CRC is going to look forward to hearing more on Tuesday. Um, are there any initial thoughts from I, any CRC or planning board members regarding what we just heard? I'm going to let the hands populate. Jack. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm very uh, disturbed by this. Um, comment by the planning board member that mentioned uh, open meeting law violation. I think we need to rectify this now because it, it's it just it doesn't sit well with me. I feel like this was advertised uh, zoning priorities. We have 14 items. Uh, we're, we're trying to work, you know, through a plan and a schedule. And can we? Please rectify this, um, because I, I I'm not comfortable with the with with the comment uh, that we're violating open meeting law. Okay, thank you, Jack. Um, I will say the way the CRC meeting was noticed was presentation and discussion items A zoning priorities, and that's all it said, um, and so that. Um, covers everything, which is why I believe we have adequately um, complied with open meeting law and that CRC notice also indicated that it was joint with the planning board. Um, and so that agenda and notice on the calendar covered that it would be with the planning board, that zoning priorities would be discussed um, as the discussion item that would be joint with the planning board for this special meeting. Um, and based on that, um, that covers everything we've planned on discussing tonight um, in, in the, you know, given that open meeting law requires only adequate notice. And um, that I think fulfills that requirement that the CRC meeting agenda that said it would be joint with the planning board said zoning priorities without any specification beyond that. Is that um, to Jack, does that, I, I'm not sure what else you I, would want me to. I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I would, you know, ask Janet to like, what's going on? <laughs> um, Cause I just feel like that, that it just, there, there, there's some, we need some consensus here with our discussions, we, we need to move forward and. Uh, okay. Janet, you oh. raised your hand. I will recognize you out of the line here for discussion on work plan. So Jack, I, I can understand how you, you might be reacting to this, but um, it's nothing personal to me. It's, it's literally, I talked to Maria at the zoning subcommittee yesterday and asked her what this agenda item was I talked to you last week about it. Like, what were you talking about? Because I was confused by it. I didn't understand why you were all getting together to talk about a work plan. And then I also talked to Christine about it. And it was just work plan, work plan, work plan. And I never heard that it was anything substantive. And so, you know, I'm kind of an organized planning person. And I had no idea until this afternoon that we were going to start talking about the BL, which I know is very intricate. And, um, you know, if we want to start talking about 
all the stuff that Doug Marshall did and the, the different thing maps, I'm, I'm totally down for that, but I just don't think we noticed it properly. And it's just a legal issue. And so I didn't look at the CRC um, agenda, I looked at our agenda. And so I'm just responding to that. And so the, the purpose of opening meeting law is to give the public notice of what's gonna be discussed. And so I think what Mandy Joe is saying, hey, we told you, and then I'm saying, the planning board didn't even tell me and I had, you know, inquired about it over and over. So it's, you know, that's, that's where I'm coming from. It's not personal. And I'm glad we're talking about this work plan because, you know, that's what I'm here for. And I've been thinking about it a lot. So I hope, you know, it's just the law, you know, and I'm seeing it that way. And I understand what Mandy Jo is saying based on her agenda, you know, so I don't know where that leaves us, but I hope it's not a personal thing. I mean, I think as attorneys, we're often just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm a step away from things a lot of times. I'm just like, oh, that's just the rule. Let's enforce it. That's fair. People have noticed. I know a lot of people would love to talk about the BL who live right next to the BL and probably didn't realize it looking at our agenda. So that's it. Does anyone else want to make a comment on what Janet has raised? Steve Schreiber is raising his I, I see that Steve and Johanna have raised their hands since and when I asked that. So Steve and Johanna. So we're not the ones that decide whether or not there's an open meeting law violation. So I think that if the planning board member wants to complain or anyone else wants to complain, they should do that. But I think we should, you know, forge ahead with the agenda that in my opinion was properly noticed. Johanna. Um, I echo Stephen's sentiments. I, to me, the process seems fine and let's move on. Andrew. I, I, I'm with Janet on this one. I think that the planning board expectation, I, I think a lot of folks are, who, who follow the planning board, they'll look at our agenda and not consider looking at the, the uh, the CRC even in a joint meeting. And I, I think, you know, Janet's comments about raising this up multiple times and not getting an answer are pretty, uh, they're pretty powerful. So I, I, I would, I would agree. I, it seems like it wasn't properly noticed. I'm going to make a decision that before we go on, there were two other things that no one has mentioned as potentially problematic. Um, the, the presentation we just heard in a discussion following that presentation and then um, a summary of Jack and I's conversation and how the two boards might collaborate together. Again, that directly, I think everyone would agree, relates to a work plan. Um, it appears the two agendas were listed slightly differently. Um, I just looked at the planning board agenda. Um, let's finish those two discussions and see where we are time-wise before we spend more time on this, because I know we're not gonna be here all night as a joint, as a joint group. Um, and then we can make a decision as a group um, and entertain any potential motions or not regarding any further discussion at that time. Um, but Andrew, your hand is still up. Did you have anything more to add? The, okay, just wanted to make sure. So so I that's the decision I'm, I'm going to go with right now. We will potentially revisit this when we finish the two other items that were on the list to talk about before we get to substantive matters to forge into, dip a toe into how to discuss substantive matters with seven and five, 12 members of, of the two committees. Um, and so back to, we were gonna discuss feedback and thoughts on what Rob and Chris presented. Um, Maria and then Dorothy. Thanks, Andy Joe. Um, so let's see, I remember what I was gonna say. Oh, so at last night's zoning subcommittee meeting, it just made it really clear to me how important it is to have planning department staff involved in discussions in real time. As um, the zoning subcommittee created a few studies and we made our own sort of conclusions like, oh, this is interesting. And then they stepped right in and said, actually, 
you know, I don't want to get into the weeds, but, you know, having that was really enlightening to hear both Chris and Rob speak up um, and inform us exactly of like why this has that implication or um, this has this impact that we didn't consider. So I really look to the planning staff to set sort of their time frame and work plan as far as what is appropriate for them to get work done presentable to the various groups. Um, you know, the zoning subcommittee, we do not have the historical knowledge and zoning, I'll speak for myself, zoning bylaw knowledge that um, the planning department has. So I'd really look to them to set sort of the speed and the series of meetings that we should have moving forward. Um, I think that when we started the zoning subcommittee weekly meetings, it was back when we misunderstood that by March 15th, we should have this and that's changed. So I'm hoping that can relax a little so that we can get more work done. Um, so yeah, I really look forward to um, the planning department, like I'm over the moon that they're gonna help out. And so, um, yeah, I just wanna know more about like moving forward, what next steps might be, but um, but yeah, thank you for, you know, helping out and uh, letting the zoning subcommittee help out however we can, but that you guys really tell us, you know, where we can fold into all this work moving forward. Thank you, Maria. Dorothy. Well, I <clears throat> just second what Maria said, but uh, what I wanted to say was I was so pleased that the planning uh, department's list, their own list, had inclusionary zoning at the top, because I believe that the motivation behind this, a lot of a lot of the motivation behind the, the rezoning is desire to create more and more affordable housing and not just through the fact that if we would create more housing, somehow it'll all become more affordable, but really a big aim to create housing that can fit a more diverse group of people. So I think it's really important to have inclusionary zoning right up there at the top when we consider what we're doing. So thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, is there anyone else that has any comments or feedback at this time? Janet. So I'm really excited to see the inclusionary zoning there because I, you know, I think um, it's so important. And I think with some tweaks, we can have a great new bylaw in that that is more comprehensive and covers you know, any development more, with more than 20, 10 units. And it will implement one of the um, goals of the master plan. Um, I, I, you know, just from our, you know, two or three zoning subcommittee meetings and all the um, maps and all the analysis of what the bylaw means and how it relates to this and that, and then, you know, who owns what property, how big things could get, um, what the effect of footnotes are. And, and there's lots of footnotes that, you know, especially footnote A is a very loose kind of waiver. I really do appreciate the planning department bringing more staff on and and the and putting a work plan that has a lot of careful analysis because you just can't look at something and think oh here here's the easy fix like it, it has weird repercussions everywhere and you have to kind of sort through them and i also like the hive mind of you know the zoning subcommittee members everybody on that has something different to bring to the table and different points of view and also it's a good place for the public to be involved so I just, I do love this slower work plan because I'd rather be thorough and do a really well, good job because the zoning changes as we know last, can last for decades. Um, I have a question for um, Rob and Chris about design guidelines. Cause when I read the master plan, it literally like trumpets that increasing density should be accompanied by strict design guidelines. And that it, to ensure that the town in 10 or 20 years is still Amherst. It still looks like Amherst. It still has a New England style, um, a development pattern that is not sprawling everywhere. And then also that we you know, protect our historic buildings. And so I know that's on the list and it's, it always sort of shows up at the bottom of the list, but we have money now, or we've had money for years. Can that, can we jumpstart that? So, bef you know, to see, you know, for downtown planning, because I think whatever we want to see downtown is probably what we want to see in village centers. And so is, can we do that faster? Like, is there a plan to start putting an RFP out and looking at people and, you know, I volunteer to help in any way. Chris? Um, we're working with the, um, with the town, with the finance committee, with the JCPC and 
with staff here in the planning department to try to work out exactly um, how much money we need for that design guidelines analysis. And um, we think we actually need more money than what we had initially. Um, and the money that we had initially is unfortunately old money and it's not old money in the good way, it's old money in the bad way. So that money may, um, we may need to ask for some new money to do this. So stay, stay tuned, but we're working on it. Colony. Yeah, um, my question, I'll try to, it's, it's like these different thoughts in my head, I'll try to be as clear as possible. Um, I'm just wondering how previous um, feedback that we received from the community, like there were, for example, two downtown planning community engagement, and there's like lots of data there and uh, in Bank Center, and one was, at, I think, the library. And so how is that information going to be incorporated into the planning, what's happening? in the changes in zoning. And secondly, you know, since our goal is to have more affordable housing, to have more work, workforce housing, diversity of people living in our community, what, what are we doing to ensure that is indeed gonna happen in the sense that have, like I'm just thinking that we're assuming that if we build more affordable housing, then we will have more people of color living here, or we will have more, uh, work, you know, more people working here, teachers and so forth living here. Whereas in my mind, I'm wondering if it would make sense to do a survey that would be sent out to teachers, firefighters, police, uh, different workforce, and try to get a sense of what kind of housing would they like? Would it be independent? I like the idea of starter homes. Like, would they prefer that? Or would they prefer to be in condos? Or would they prefer to be in, you know, are we building the right kind of housing that people would want? Because I did read about one study where they built like a special builder was invited to build workforce housing for teachers and none of the teachers moved in because that's not what they wanted. And so it ended up being rented to, you know, marketplace, whatever. So I'm just hoping that we can do some sort of community, either it's already been done, and if not, we could, while you are working on some of the details, we could set out surveys uh, to work for us, to people of color, uh, UMass, Hampshire College, P PhD students who could be recruited to stay back and what would be inviting for them to stay back. Uh, Chris or Rob, do you have any thoughts on that before I recognize Doug? Um, I have a thought about the um, the community forums that were held a few years ago. I think we've um, we've all I and I think I speak for other planners have internalized that, um, and I think the planning board has internalized what we heard at those meetings. Um, if someone wants to have, you know, things written out in list form about exactly what we heard, you know, we can probably do that. Um, but I think, you know, we heard what people had to say. There were differences of opinion. Um, not everybody agreed. And we tried to listen to what everybody said. And so what we're trying to um, accommodate or accomplish is, you know, trying to be as as, as uh, knowledgeable of all of those different um, opinions, but put something together that we can actually move forward with. Um, so that's, that's the answer to the community forums. I think we've internalized that, that information and we can put it in writing if, if people want that. Um, the other uh, part about surveys, um, perhaps that's something that um, CRC would like to accomplish in its outreach, but I don't know if the planning department is um, equipped to do that at this time. Thank you, Chris. Um, Doug, then Dorothy. Yeah, I just wanted to say in response to the question about the timing of uh, design guidelines that I would not support 
commencing a design guideline process until we've had more conversation about what we actually want because those design guidelines typically are a way of depicting what you already want. Thank you, Doug. Um, Dorothy. One way to approach this is, and this has been mentioned by people in, at the many meetings, is to take a look at a successful neighborhood and see what it is, what's there. And a successful neighborhood to me is one where people interact, mix and have a sense of community and seem happy to be there. So I did some riding around and you know, on the ground research today, uh, two of the key neighborhoods that have been talked about, um, I did um, Lincoln and Sunset and Prospect and I did uh, Cottage Street. And what I saw was there was a difference in lot size in various places, but there were some things that were in common uh, between the neighborhoods um, that wasn't dependent on lot size, um, that there was private space in the back, not necessarily huge, but some private outdoor space. And then there was public outward looking space. They almost all had front porches. So in fact, you could do a calendar of uh, front porches of Amherst and it would be a really good fundraiser because there are a lot of wonderful quirky front porches all over the place. So um, a good community is one where people uh, feel they can have some time outdoors by themselves and where they can interact in a very low key way just by sitting on your porch, watching people go by or you know, working in your front yard and talking to people who go by on the sidewalk. And um, this was true for smaller houses on smaller lots and bigger houses on bigger lots. So um, I think looking at saying what, what works, I mean, several people have mentioned this. We could do some more research of our own. Um, what seems to make a neighborhood one where people work together and come together on an organized fashion? and you know, have neighborhood, regular neighborhood meetings, um, have neighborhood listservs, uh, people know each other by name, um, that kind of thing. And that is, I think, that the aspect of Amherst that is most desirable. So um, I think that, I think I do like Shalini's survey idea very, very much. We make assumptions um, and sometimes, you know, we don't know. And if we want a more varied neighborhood, more people and varied incomes, we have to really find out, well, would they, would they come if we made it, if we build it, would they come, you know? So that, that's my suggestion that we also look at what's here. We know that many neighborhoods in Amherst are really great and people like them. So how can we develop them, add some infill, um, increase density in ways that don't sacrifice those good qualities. I think that's kind of the challenge that we face here. Janet. When I was thinking about the work plan, um, I was trying to, um, and I, I know that this is gonna be a longer process, but does this, does this, for this is like a CRC question, you're gonna be doing like a community impact review and trying to figure out the impacts on different members of the community and did you have a policy of doing a community impact review? And so I thought you were taking a deeper look at the effects of different zoning changes. And I also wondered like, what's the timing of that? What would that look like? And then also, are you gonna be doing the community outreach to, to or is that, you know, how to get the community involved? And I know Christine Bressup is saying that the planning department is gonna put, you know, the live, to, you know, the zoning priorities onto the website. And so all these, you know, documents that we're generating and ideas and whatever is gonna be live and people can comment on that. So I'm trying to see how that's all gonna go. Like the CRC has a community impact review. We're supposed to be doing a robust public process. Is that the planning board's job? Um, you know, what, what's that gonna look like? And how does it tie in? How does that, how do those two things tie in with the work plan? So, so that was actually going to be one of my questions. Um, I, I haven't spoken yet, so I'm going to take my chair's presiding officer's privilege right now to ask a few questions, but also try to respond to, to some of those questions too. Um, CRC, as was mentioned, is actively working on an outreach plan for the comprehensive housing policy. The goal is to 
potentially use that as a model for outreach regarding zoning um, amendments. Uh, that outreach plan would include, um, you know, we haven't made any decisions yet, but part of the thinking of with the housing outreach plan is community, at least one community conversation regarding the housing policy, where it's an actual conversation with people who show up at a meeting um, instead of one way public comment. Um, it is possible that that might be similar to how outreach regarding zoning bylaws work. Um, much of that outreach is hard to do before you have something in front of you to talk about. Um, we saw that at a council meeting when there were just zoning priorities, but no concrete proposals. It's hard to really delve into the discussion. And um, so I think the thinking right now, at least from the chair's point of view, is that much of that outreach beyond the public comments that are available at all meetings, the public hearing that will happen after a formal presentation and proposal to town council on a bylaw um, will, will occur sort of after the CRC and the council have some initial discussions on the visions and stuff. Some of what I was envisioning might happen today between our two bodies. Um, that that'll happen at a council meeting, that'll happen potentially at a, that'll happen obviously at a CRC meeting. Um, there is thinking of using, potentially using for zoning, these zoning proposals, um, blanking on the name, not the work um, sessions for councils in our rules, but the, um, the, the public dialogue sessions. Thank you, Shalini. <laughs> the public dialogue sessions for prior to council meetings for public to get involved in conversations. So it's a, a what I would say is it's a work plan in progress, even with the community outreach um, that will hopefully, as we see where Chris and Rob are on timing, will be able to be fleshed out with specific meeting times and all. We did just change our membership um, at February 9th meeting. CRC will be talking about meeting times too. Um, with a potential to maybe move them to a time that more people can attend, because that is certainly in our thing. So, so that's a response to that. Um, I, I actually, in that, wanted to ask Chris and Rob, um, as they come up with their work plan, if they can think about because I don't know how specific the work plan will be in terms of timing and when things go to council and when things come to CRC, as that comes to think about potentially needing some extended time between initial proposals and where you guys were talking about, you know, where that discussion and nitty gritty sort of discussion of feedback goes, potentially needing some extended time to do that community outreach at that time. Um, to just consider that as, as you're thinking about timing with, with work plan. Um, and then the one other thing I wanted to mention that doesn't really relate to work plan, but I wanted to put out there because I know we have a number of attendees um, and I will mention it again at the CRC meeting is in mid January, Governor Baker signed the housing choice bill um, that related to a whole bunch of housing initiatives one of which was amending MGL chapter 40A section five. Section five is the section that deals with voting quantums to pass zoning amendments at the town council or city council vote. Um, and those quantums for specific types of bylaw changes have changed from two thirds required at the town council to simple majority required. So from nine votes in our form of government to seven votes. Some of the priorities and some of these revisions that we might be looking at might fall under that category. We do not know now, obviously, which may or which may not. Um, and so as these, these revisions and discussions take place, that will be, be determined and will be made known by town attorney um, to determine which way, which number will be required, whether it'll be simple majority or two thirds. But I wanted to put that out there while we have public attending and a lot of interest to know that that typical requirement for two thirds for all zoning changes as of mid January under state law has changed for a small subset of zoning changes, some of which may fall under what we are working on now. Um, um, so, so Mindy Joe, so 
you don't feel like these zoning priorities are specific proposals, like that will come later and that will sort of trigger a public process. And then how does the community impact review go fit into your Thank like, you for reminding me about the community impact review. Yeah, there was a lot you had a lot to say, so I didn't want to. <laughs> so, so yes, the CRC has adopted a community impact review or pro well, community impact process or community review process. It's not just an impact review. It is a process for dealing with measures that come to CRC. Um, and so those when measures come, CRC has sometimes struggled with what are we supposed to do with this referral from town council and what does council want back. So we've adopted a process that allows us to figure out what exactly the council is asking us to do um, and then how to go about um, doing that. You know, sometimes it's something that might not need an impact or benefit or pro and con type analysis or thinking it might need more of a can this be applied. Um, you know, more of a goal analysis. And so, so that, that process involves figuring out which of those analyses or questioning and, and considerations is appropriate. And then for when um, an impacts and benefits analysis is appropriate, um, for doing that in a way that this document guides the CRC to ask questions. Um, because we realized if we didn't have anything written down we would miss categories of questions. And, and it has helped us in the past to just review the categories and say, hey, did we talk about transportation issues regarding X, Y, or Z bylaw amendment that we were referred to? Um, did we talk about um, you know, climate and sustainability measures and questions do we have? Let's take a minute and say, are there any questions that relate to that? Or are there any effects we can think of and what might they be? Um, and so it's it's more of a guide to reviewing the proposal in front of the CRC than an actual document necessarily that is produced at the end of that beyond the CRC report. Um, that will happen throughout the discussion, I believe, at CRC, meaning CRC members need to take that that sort of document and use it to guide how they're going to approach asking questions and reviewing the measures both before and after a final measure is proposed at the council. So, so it was adopted for something that has been referred to the CRC from the council. Obviously we are starting these conversations before that formal referral. Um, and so, so it is likely that document will in, you know, will, reflect questions will reflect that documents um categories i hope that helps a little bit of an understanding of how crc will go about looking at zoning bylaw revisions both before there are specific proposals and after and you mentioned a question about specific proposals yes this these zoning priorities had some specific proposals in them but crc recognizes that crc is not the expert to determine whether that is the actual right proposal or revision for accomplishing the main goal of making that a priority. And that's what we are relying on Chris and Rob and the planning department um, and the building commissioner to bring to us is they could very well say, hey, you recommended eliminating footnote M. We think that's the absolute wrong thing to do to accomplish the goal you want. And that's where we'll start the discussion. Um, so it's not necessarily that these are the set in stone what the revisions are going to come. So I hope that clarifies that. That was something that was discussed a lot at the town council level before these zoning priorities were adopted. So, you know, I, Shalini. Yeah, and I'm just, these are my thoughts and we haven't yet clarified and we haven't yet just finalized them, but um, I'm also imagining that that um, while we're also gathering feedback on the measures that that's part of their, like, we, like Mandy Jo mentioned, the, the dialogue sessions will be kind of more like consult and like having very specific stakeholders identified and using existing groups to reach out to different stakeholders, whether it's renters or whether it's like I was mentioning, 
And so some of the work we're doing is once there are specific measures, but I'm imagining that there are going to be questions about people's lived experiences, quality of life, so not speaking to specifically the measures or the changes, the zoning changes, but I'm also imagining that we're going to create a process like the surveys or uh, forum di dialogue sessions. There's some combination of things where we're also understanding what are people's and that's not going to be the planning department. So don't worry, that's not on you. I mean, I'm hoping that CRC or some, with some combination is going to be able to um, gather that information as well about people's lived experiences and not just about specific zoning bylaw changes. And that will be incorporated and will be useful and helpful in making sure that what we are creating is meeting people's needs. Thank you. Um, Chris and Rob, have you received enough feedback um, to help you continue on in, in coming up with a work plan? Are there any specific questions you have that you'd like to hear thoughts from CRC or the planning board on as you work towards a more complete work plan? Uh, I, I think that's good. I don't have any specific questions, but do recognize that we will, I think maybe at the ninth um, meeting, really try to can better understand that extended time frame that we need to build in. So we are we are aware of that and, and have that in mind, but um, expecting that we'll adjust that and, and uh, finalize that in our next discussions. But thank you. Thank you, Rob. Chris? I don't really have any other questions or comments to make at this time. I'm looking forward to our meeting on Tuesday. Any further comments? Questions, feedback for Rob and Chris from planning board or CRC members? I know CRC gets another crack at this on the 9th. So Janet. Um, I'm just, in the planning board, we usually have a tradition of after we discuss or get information um, going to the public. And I see there's a hand up in our attendees. And so before we you know, make a decision or go on. So I just want to point that out. Uh, thank you, Janet. Um, I was going to before I... Oh. Hold on. Um, I, I recognize there is a hand. It happens to be, I think, if, if it's still from the last time I looked, yes, it's it's from, from a fellow counselor. Um, planning board already had its public comment time. CRC did not, uh, because it's a special meeting, include public comment time as presiding officer during this joint meeting. I will take that into consideration, but I would like us to get through the update on collaboration before that hand is recognized because those are very closely coordinated um, at that time. But I do, after those two and before we move on to whether we have time to get into a more substantive discussion, do intend to recognize and potentially allow more comment period. I'll, I'll, I'll refer to also the planning board chair on that too, but, but I am aware of that and, and we'll, we'll fit some of that in, in, the, in another appropriate time, but thank you, Janet. Um, so without any more comments from CRC or planning board members, uh, we're going to move on to item number two sort of in this work plan discussion. We kind of separated them, which is an update on thoughts regarding collaboration um, on the zoning discussion. So, so as you saw, there's a work plan with a whole lot of meetings of three separate bodies. And Jack, myself, and actually Maria Chow, who's chair of the zoning subcommittee, had a nice discussion to talk about how we could collaborate. This joint meeting is one of the first of that collaboration, but one of our, as, as chairs of these three bodies, some of our primary concerns is not, um, is allowing the planning department and the building commissioner and all to get their work done without having to attend too many meetings to talk about the same thing over and over again um, with different bodies because the, if, if they have to in one week attend three two hour meetings or one and a half hour meetings of zoning subcommittee, planning board and CRC all talking about the exact same bylaw amendment, for example, um, that's, that's four plus hours that they could be working on those bylaw amendments instead of talking about them with, with community um, and with the committee members. So we are hoping to somehow have more joint meetings 
And you know, this is something that CRC will need to discuss in terms of timing, not proposed for tonight to discuss that. That's why there is calendar meetings on the 9th for discussion as to when we can time stuff. But we, I particularly want to hear the thoughts of the planning board members and the CRC members about how we can do joint meetings more frequently potentially, how frequent that could be, whether it fits into schedules of planning board um, and zoning subcommittee in hopes that, you know, we heard some public comments already about, we don't know where to go when these are being discussed, that, that hopefully the public also has an idea of which meetings they need to attend a little more clearly um, for that. So, so where Jack, I, and Maria were leaning, I think, were to try and figure out at a CRC meeting, which of the zoning subcommittee or planning board meeting times is better for CRC and that CRC then would um, in some sense join those meetings instead of asking zoning subcommittee or planning board to come to a CRC meeting whenever CRC might have a meeting right now they are Tuesdays two to four, um, which we recognize is not always great for community members volunteering their time and having full-time jobs, but also for residents to actually attend meetings. Um, so that is in some sense the update. And I think we were thinking potentially as frequently as once a month, but this all depends on work plan and the timing of the work plan um, that we will see out of planning department um, and the building commissioner a little bit next week about how frequently these combined meetings might happen. But we, I, I personally would love to hear what people think about trying to do joint meetings to have real discussions um, with 12 people <laughs> and, and whether it might be beneficial to everyone here um, and, and thoughts. So with that, I will recognize, Jack, Jack or Maria, do you wanna add anything before I start recognizing people to that sort of summary? Maria's shaking her head, Jack. Uh, no, I, uh, I have nothing. I just, you know, we're trying to get something that works, you know, given the town council, uh, you know, initiatives for, you know, working out these zoning priorities. So we, myself, um, want to be flexible and I hopefully, you know, the, the rest of the planning board will um, be as well, but, and we're also kind of like recognizing the planning department, uh, you know, limited resources, fantastic resources at that, but limited uh, in terms of, uh, you know, staff and, and time. So we're, we're just, I feel like this came about because of, uh, you know, the schedule that was going to be with, with CRC meeting on, you know, every Tuesday and, 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 and Chris's, you know, draft schedule, it just, wasn't going to work. So with that said, you know, I feel like we were going to kind of revisit, you know, what was going to be be able to be accomplished within a reasonable time frame that you know would make the town council uh, would you know achieve the town council's goal. So um so we're looking at less meetings, but more productive meetings, I guess, is, you know, a general concept. So is that, is that your understanding, Mandy? Yes. So <laughs> I think with that, um, we'll go to the people who have raised their hands. Dorothy. Okay. I understand what the problem is, but I will say that the feeling of the meetings are completely different. The zoning subcommittee, small, very intensive detail, takes a lot of time to figure out what is being said. Um, and I would hate to lose those detailed meetings. To me, they're very essential. I understand the problem with the staff, the planning staff who are so helpful. And, I, and so I'm not, gonna, I'm not offering a solution to the problem, but I, I'm saying that the, we, we can't lose the level of discussion at the zoning subcommittee. And then it carries over, it's discussed from slightly different points of view at the planning board, even though there's a good deal of overlap. I found them all really essential. I think the real issue is that the CRC 
everybody in the CRC has to absolutely, totally understand what it is we're talking about. And then somehow we have to help other people on the town council understand it as well. We really don't, this, this is so important, just so absolutely integral to the success of our town that we have to make sure that we have done the work and the discussion and it's not easy. It's not easy. So I'm just, that's my comment that I, I find at this moment, all three meetings very valuable. Thank you, Dorothy. Doug. Yeah, I was just going to point out that you won't have 12 people if, if CRC comes to a zoning subcommittee meeting because you'll only have five of us uh, rather than seven of us from the planning board in attendance at those meetings. And I don't know how, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think who the two members of the planning board are who are not on the, the zoning subcommittee, but you know whether they would feel like they were left out if you came to the, the zoning subcommittee. So I just thought that was a one consideration. Um, I'm on the zoning subcommittee and the planning board. And so I've blocked out those times and I, you know, I'm happy and supportive to have as many of the CRC that want to join those conversations. Uh, as uh, Dorothy mentioned, I think the, the tenor and the feel of the zoning subcommittee meeting is much more casual and uh, conversational, I guess. Um, so I, I too would be sorry to see that wither away. Um, and I think it probably will be effective if most of the work that's discussed comes from the planning staff. Um, I think, uh, you know, given the work that we've been doing on the zoning subcommittee, um, I certainly show up at meetings more informed when I've done some work to prepare for the conversation. And it'll be easy for me not to do that work if planning staff is showing up with the, the bulk of the work. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Maria. Thanks, Andy Jeff. Um, I agree with Doug, but I do think that the difference between us bringing the prepared work and the planning department having time to produce more thorough, more in-depth work will actually be a more effective meeting. Um, we make a lot of guesses and assumptions. Me, me, we meaning like the zoning subcommittee, we're mere mortals. But then when the planning department, you know, comes in with their sort of background and historical knowledge of what's been tried, what's failed, what's worked, um, I think their data is gonna be much more telling and they just need the time to do it between the meetings. So I think it's finding, uh, um, hopefully Rob and Chris and the rest of the department can find that fine balance of how much time do we need to get something pretty sub substantive and informative so that we can all understand it? And, you know, I feel like every time we presented something, Doug, at the zoning subcommittee, it was a lot of data. And I'm not sure everyone picked up on it. They probably had to look at their graphs and charts later on their own. But I feel like the staff, the planning department, could really come with um, <clears throat> something kind of um, pared down and really clear and, you know, start to list the pros and cons in real ways. I feel like we were just sort of showing what's possible and what's currently possible, but they can actually sort of distill it for us on another level. So I just wanna make sure we're not meeting so frequently that we can't get that information. Um, so I agree, our, our meetings have been very, dis, you know, very di much about like dialogue and discussion, but at the same time, I'd love to have more thorough information to talk about. So from the staff. So um, I don't know what the frequency of meetings it is, but um, hopefully that's the work plan that's gonna figure that out. Thank you, Maria. Janet. I have a question for Christine. Did you, do you, because we, I thought we've done at the last couple of zoning subcommittee meetings, there's, there's been some great analysis and charts of um, you know, different properties, who owns them, what build out could look like, a lot of sketches and, um, you know, analysis. I'm wondering if, Christine, did you find that useful or would you rather have the planning department bring that to the planning board and the zoning subcommittee? Just hear our questions and put those charts together. Did, it seemed like that was great work and I was, I was just admiring the depth of expertise we have in the zoning subcommittee. So that's my first question and I have one other idea. Yeah, I answer that. Yes, you may. Yeah, I, I found that useful. I, I will also 
be glad when the planning staff has a chance to delve into some of these things. And, and I think that Maria and Doug did a terrific job and it happens that they have, you know, architectural skills and planning skills that they can bring to these things. But, um, you know, the planning staff is really interested and wants to be involved here. So I think um, there may be opportunities for Mar Maria and Doug to contribute, but I think, you know, relying on the planning staff probably makes more sense in the end. Okay, and then I wanna call out Andrew's chart, his, his mapping also. Um, the, I had this idea and I don't know if it's gonna fit in. Um, I just thought of this before our meeting is, I was wondering if the CRC wanted to have like a liaison to the zoning subcommittee, because we were getting, you know, we're like what Dorothy is talking about is like really nitty gritty. And, you know, we're talking about different categories and you can have a fourplex and a trickplex and what's that versus an apartment and, you know, that kind of discussion. I thought that would be maybe a good person from the CRC as a liaison, but it sounds like you all want to be more involved. So I'm not sure if that idea would quite fit at this moment, maybe in the future. So. So just to respond to that before I recognize Shalini, um, the council is the one that determines who the liaisons are and the council has not designated a liaison to either the planning board or the zoning subcommittee under its rules. Um, but beyond that, I do believe given conversations that CRC has had in the past and the fact that it took a lead on trying to come up with some priorities that the council wants to see come to it. And the fact that the CRC is the council committee that is discussing land use and zoning per council charge um, that the full council wants to be involved. The full CRC wants to be involved in more detail with the discussions relating to the priorities that the council asked the town manager to come back with with zoning changes. Um, so I hope that somewhat answers the question. Um, certainly I can't speak for every committee member, but that's my understanding given prior discussions at CRC and council. Um, Shalini, you had your hand up, but you unraised it. Yeah, I just wanted to hear you out first. I mean, I wanted to give you the space to answer first. Um, yeah, I think this is an incredibly timely and important conversation. I'm glad we're all having this. I think what I'm also hearing is that there's a lack of clarity around the different skill sets and roles and the timing of those things in the sense that it sounds like the zoning committee is doing a lot of very in-depth work and has some skill sets, which are very useful. But then I also heard from uh, the planning department that perhaps those skills would be more useful at a different time. And it, some of that work needs to happen in the planning department and then what is the role of the CRC in all of this? Like we can come to all of the meetings, but what are we contributing? What is our role? And so just having some clarity around who's doing what and what is the timing of those things and how do we share that information? I guess that's kind of what we're doing right now, but I just thought I will summarize that's what's going on in my head. And, and what I'm seeing as a CR, as a town councilor, my, Constantly, my. Hello. Oh, you are here. Do you want me to leave the lights? Oh. Oops. Okay. So, um, yeah, and I, 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 and I'll just venture out and say that I think, um, as town councilors, our role, an important role, is to obviously listen into um, the community and get feedback and all of that, and also the long-term planning as CRC members of some of these issues. And so, I, I mean, that's that feels like our role. And then it'd be interesting to see how we can clearly identify what are the skill sets and roles of the different people working here. Thank you, Shalini. Dorothy. Um, I go to the zoning subcommittee, not really to influence it, I just go because it's helping me to try to understand it. So, um, you know, you go to different places for different things, right? Um, CRC is going to have to be making uh, decisions, but, you know, I have found this a very complex topic, but really important. And so I've been grappling with doing it. And um, 
so when we when we go to a meeting, it doesn't mean necessarily participating and and guiding. It just means attending and listening. That's all. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, any other thoughts of planning board or CRC members regarding this? I'm going to start with Evan and then go to Jack. Yeah. So I just just to throw my two cents in. I think the idea of trying to increase joint meetings is definitely um, a good thing, but also um, provide having some clarity about when we would be doing this, like what are the stages at which a, a joint meeting would be appropriate. Because um, I, I understand the concern for staff time, which I think is important. Then I think the other thing that you mentioned that I want to echo is um, for the public who's trying to follow it as well. I think it's really, you know, I'm looking at the attendees list and I'm seeing Quite a few names that I know were at uh, Councilor Schreiber in my district meeting on Monday talking about zoning, and now they're here tonight talking about zoning, and they, they may well be at the CRC meeting on Tuesday to talk about zoning. Um, and I'm sure they would like to have to attend less meetings to have their input. Um, and so finding a way to make clear, I think, to the public when joint meetings are happening where their input would be um, valuable so people don't feel like they have to be at every zoning subcommittee meeting, every planning board meeting, and every CRC meeting so that they don't miss an opportunity to hear something important, um, I think will be really will be really valuable. Um, but then I also do want to sort of echo what I, what I think Dorothy might have been saying, which is that um, there also needs to be some space for the separate committees themselves to be able to have internal discussions about these. Um, and so uh, you know, I think it's, it's valuable when we have a CRC meeting with the five CRC members to be able to have a conversation. You can have a, a little bit of a more thorough conversation. Um, and so I'm hoping we can find a way to have those joint meetings while still preserving a little bit of time for the, for the individual committees to have their discussions without having additional meetings, right? Um, I, I don't want us to have joint meetings and, and then separate meetings all the time because I, I also want to make sure this doesn't increase the meeting load of the counselors or the resident volunteers who are giving their time for free to the to the planning board and the zoning subcommittee. Um, and so I, I trust that, that uh, Mandy and Jack and Maria can, can work that out. But I think increasing the joint meetings is a good idea. But we always, I think always making sure there's a reason why we're doing that joint meeting and that reason is clear to us and to the public about why that meeting is a joint meeting and what the objective is of bringing those groups together. Like we did tonight, this was a very clear one. I mean, I, we have to have a discussion about how we're going to work together. That's sort of the objective, um, but also providing some initial feedback on the work plan. Thank you, Evan. Jack. Yeah, I was just gonna say that, you know, five of the uh, seven planning board members are on the zoning subcommittee. So that's that's quite a, a few people. And, and so uh, my thinking was that, is there some uh, process that we can capture from the zoning subcommittee, uh, you know, uh, workings that, that we can just incorporate within our regular planning board meetings so that we can have, you know, consolidate and have fewer meetings, put less stress on the planning uh, department and just, you know, just add some efficiencies uh, through it all. So I think that that is something that I think, um, you know, came to mind that, you know, how, how can we do this better? Um, but I, you know, I agree. I, I like that format of the zoning subcommittee. And you know, what is it, and why can't we bring that into the planning board and be productive? You know, since five of the seven are already on the zoning subcommittee. So, and you know, our schedule has been fairly light uh, with regard to projects and and that. So it just seems like we can do that. You know, for you know the next you know month or or two which is your time frame for getting some, you know, knocking out some of the, the, the priorities. Thank you, Jack. Maria. Uh, yeah, exactly. That. I think that um, I am going to try to do my second attempt at dissolving the zoning subcommittee. <laughs> um, basically, the zoning subcommittee meetings are an hour and a half. I've 
personally feel so rushed. Like I, I try to get into the meat of each topic and make sure we have public comment at the end. I feel like if the planning board meetings are light, that um, if there's opportunity to put on the agenda working session for this topic, that um, like Doug said, when we work on things, we really understand it a lot better and we're kind of passionate about it anyways. We tend to like side get sidetracked and show other charts that maybe aren't related. But um, I think we could totally set aside an agenda item on, at um, planning board meetings to do that. And the way we run it is we have the members present what they found and then just open it up among the member, other members to chime in with like, oh, did you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And then having Chris and Rob there to immediately give feedback and say, oh, well, this is impossible because the parking will never work. Or we've tried that and this is the reason why that didn't work. So that kind of discussion would be fantastic to have at the planning board, I, I think, um, especially with all the new planning board members and having a lot of different input. And um, and I think we, since, like you said, Jack, we've already carved out this time slot and it's a much more sort of um, liberal, you know, it's, what is it, three hours long usually. So it'll be a much more, we can get really much more in depth into each um, topic, I think. I feel like when we were presenting at the zoning subcommittees, we just barely got all the data out and people are just, you know, letting it all sink in. And it was a little fast paced in my opinion. So um, if other members are open to that idea, I'm totally behind um, having, eliminating zoning subcommittee <laughs> yet again, this is really the thing that's on my agenda. But, um, and then, you know, having it sort of fold into um, in like an hour or two for each planning board meeting. So yeah, what, what do you guys think, other board members? Doug and then Andrew. All right, I, uh, you know, I'm fine with what Maria was uh, proposing, uh, but what I was gonna say was that the, the reason I think the zoning subcommittee meetings have been more uh, conversational and, and not quite as formal is that the members are all unmuted and the chair does not have to call on you before you speak. So it's much more conversational. And um, you know, if, I think if we wanted to take planning board agenda and, and say, okay, during this working session, we're just gonna all unmute and have a conversation. I think that would probably achieve the same uh, flow of thought that we get at the zoning subcommittee. Thank you, Doug. Andrew. I, I hadn't thought of your point, Doug, but I think it's a very good one. And I, I think you've really captured one of the reasons why that committee works so well, the subcommittee works so well. Um, I, I, I also agree with Maria. I think with with five of seven, it seems logical to, to collapse this, the two ceremonies, but I, I think of it not so much, I, I wouldn't present it as like disbanding it, but just kind of rolling it up into planning, you know, because I think that's, because we're still doing the work. Right, and we're still having the conversations. Um, but if we can collapse that, I think it's it makes a lot of sense for everybody. Certainly, I think for the, the the staff to be able to only have to count on one night instead of the two, I think is a, is, a, is a, a huge opportunity. And sometimes those conversations might be useful relative to the topics that we're discussing in the meeting anyway. So I'd be in favor of of, of collapsing the two. Thanks. Uh, at this point, I want to summarize. I'm, I'm going to summarize, and then actually, I'll I'll recognize Janet before I summarize. <laughs> Janet. So, um, I so I, I'm concerned about time, and so if um, you know our planning board meetings usually are about three hours long. They uh, we get kind of epic at four. So if we were donating designating an hour and a half of that each meeting to you know a footnote m or a discussion you know because it, it does take a long time i think that we're going to either have to meet as a planning board more often like maybe you know three wednesdays a month which i'm fine with but i think that the idea that we could you know i, I don't i don't i think we can't do that level of detail and work and then the regular planning board work because we're like one permit away from a four-hour meeting often so if, if the planning board is interested in adding, I mean, I would love to talk about planning for an hour and a half every other week, 
but I don't know, I think those meetings are gonna get long. So I wonder if the planning board would be interested in adding a meeting, you know, to go to go into depth um, or to make sure we have that time it doesn't get eaten away. Um, that's, I mean, maybe we could talk that at a planning board meeting, but I'm not sure it really addresses the topic so much of how does the CRC and the planning board and the zoning subcommittee is if the planning board starts acting like the zoning subcommittee and maybe we, we add make our meetings longer or add a meeting a month, I guess that's less one group for you guys to come and meet with. But I, I'm not sure we kind of address the how do we all work together kind of thing. So that's what I was going to summarize what I was hearing. Um, so thank you for bringing that back to us, Janet, but also for your comments on, on timing. Um, so what I'm hearing um, from a variety of individuals is the conversational atmosphere of a zoning subcommittee as it occurs is very helpful. Um, I, I will say at CRC, we sometimes have that conversational. It works better with five or six people than it does with 12 or 13. Um, and, and I'm hearing from, from the planning board members, and I would assume I hear it from CRC members if, if they were to chime in, that that is very helpful to things like this discussion. Um, that's harder with 13. I'm hearing that it might be wise to have the, the planning board portion or, or that the discussions regard, with planning board members to be at the planning board instead of zoning subcommittee. Um, but that that might not always work out because of timing. Um, and so that would be something I believe that Jack and Maria would have to discuss more closely to see how that goes. Um, I'm hearing that CRC with the planning board or zoning subcommittee is a good thing to do, but it needs to be thought out carefully in terms of when in the process for each of these um, changes or groupings, which we'll see from Chris and Rob on how they might group things later in the, in the week, next week, and throughout the month, um, that we have to think about when in the process those joint meetings should happen, and that they should not be the only time the boards and committees discuss, that, that each board and committee needs their own time to have those more conversational meetings too. Um, even if we can figure out a way to have a conversational meeting with 12 members. Um, but but that the individual committees, because they might be focusing on different levels of analysis or areas of analysis, um, to have that time within their own committees to focus on that would be good. Um, so that's what I've heard through this conversation. I think that might give Jack, Maria, myself, and the planning department, Chris and Rob, some idea on how to create a little bit more efficiency um, while also not overworking Chris and Rob in terms of demands on their time attending meetings um, to do that. Um, what, what might, you know, I think one of the things we need to potentially figure out is also that I heard was where each committee's um, contribution lies, what type of contribution they're contributing so that the public knows is CRC the one that's delving into the nitty gritty of this particular bylaw. And what I always refer to as the nitty gritty of is, is that setback or that frontage gonna be a hundred feet or 95 feet or 85 feet? Um, when is that happening versus when is more of a vision happening? Which committees are doing that? Are, are, is there overlap on those discussions um, and stuff like that? I think as we delve into this for the first time, that may start to work itself out a little bit, particularly potentially as we have joint meetings to see where questions people ask questions and whether they fall into that. But we might have to gear that a little bit more and, and potentially more specificity on agendas um, to help the public understand where the conversation is going on a particular agenda may also be helpful from things I've heard. Um, that's my summary of this discussion. <laughs> if, if there are, if, if people think I summarized anything wrong, feel free to correct me now. Um, or if anyone has anything to add to that summary, um, that would be great. And if not, then we will move on to recognizing the hands that are up, I believe with Jack before we, we talk about something else. Janet. So just thinking about like ways to communicate, um, 
when we started, the zoning subcommittee started working on the, um, the priorities, I put together a Google doc because I was, I was trying to think of like, what are the questions we, people will have about each priority? And so I did a summary of a Google doc for like moving the BL into footnote B, put down all the questions I could think of. And I thought, you know, if we had this living document and we had it on the web so everyone can look at it. And as we attach diagrams and documents, it could be something that people could look at. And, you know, so, and, and I did one for footnote M also, which I haven't updated after our meeting, but I kept on thinking like, if we had a live, like each, each priority had a discussion document where we're collecting information and answering questions and attaching maps or um, drawings, you know, that could be visible to the public. It could be visible to the CRC. It could be visible to the planning board, the zoning subcommittee, you know, the planning department, and that it might be just this living thing that we can consolidate the information we have. And people could post questions, you know, public could post questions. Hey, I'm wondering what does build out look like in the RG? You know, what happens to this building if there's a waiver and it's it's four stories, not three? You know, kind of thing like that. And so I just wanted to put that out as a kind of a more modern way to to you know consolidate all our information and ideas or questions together. So if just something to think about. So thank you for putting that out, that idea out there. I know I, I saw Evan immediately react and I know my immediate reaction was, ah, open meeting law. We started this whole meeting with potential open meeting law violations. And I know this is an area um, that committees, boards and other public bodies struggle with and how does it comply? And so I know my hesitancy would be to ensure that something like that complies before it, it ever does it. And I know there are some potential rulings out there that might say it does. And there is potential rulings out there that say it might say it doesn't. So so I'm, I don't know how workable that type of decision is. I don't wanna shoot it down immediately, um, but, but having a living document that can be modified when there is no meeting called um, certainly does bring in potential open meeting law concerns. Well, that was the question, that was the issue that what we were looking at was if this, you know, is it helping open meeting law by saying, hey, this is what the committee is working on. You can see it in living time and ask questions about it, or should it be revised once a week and then there'd be an announcement? So that'd be, I mean, it, it seems it's, like- It's a question for the town attorney. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is, is what it would be. Um, but thank you for that suggestion. Any other final comments? Um, Seeing none without objection, Jack, we're, I, I feel like under um, our current circumstances, we should offer another public comment period um, and then potentially um, call the CRC portion of the meeting to a close so that the planning board can finish its agenda. Does that sound like a good plan, Jack? Yeah, but you know, I'm wondering, you know, what have we accomplished tonight? <laughs> um, in terms of the, you know, the, the schedule and, and things like that. I, I feel like, are we done? Uh, should we be finishing right now? I know it's like two hours in, but um, where do we go from here sort of thing? So, um, so, so in terms of planning department work plan, that'll come back to CRC on the 9th for a way to figure out how to do it. Um, that'll have, I, from what I saw, some potential places for the planning board, items for when the planning board might have that discussion or zoning subcommittee. I, I assume Chris and Rob will be talking to you and Maria regarding some of that scheduling. Um, it'll come to the CRC for talking about that scheduling here, along with how to fit in the public feedback. Um, there will be a progress report at the town council meeting. I think not the Monday one because CRC won't have discussed it. So the one on the 22nd, if I have my dates right, for adding 14 days. Um, but but so that that's where we are with the work plan. It sounds like Chris and Rob got some valuable feedback from the two bodies regarding thoughts on the work plan and all. And then for the th three bodies together, I heard some valuable things um, from both sets of committees regarding that, that will require some 
more close work between the chairs of the three bodies to make sure that when we hold joint meetings, that they are clear on what their purpose are and they are held at the correct time. Mm -hmm. um, but that the committees believe joint meetings would be useful is what I heard. Um, so it's a matter of working out a little more of the details on how that goes about. Um, and not too often is the other thing I heard about joint meetings. <laughs> so, and, you know, and, and did I miss, do you have more questions, Jack? No, I, I just, I guess, you know, just having a, a, a plan forward was what I think was, you know, Chris had had, you know, like weekly zoning priorities knocked off and that's not gonna happen. So I was just, I'm just wondering about, you know, are we gonna revisit, you know, the schedule and just how we're going to, to deal with the plan, you know, moving forward, you know, schedule wise. And, and I'm not sure we got that resolved tonight, but um, if you- Chris, would you like to address that question? Yeah, yeah, I think that we, that Rob and I got enough input tonight from you all, from the planning board and the um, CRC that we can, you know, start to put together a schedule and we'll be in touch with Mandy Jo and um, Maria and Jack about when it would be appropriate to meet. And, you know, I think that over the next, what do we have, four days, um, Thursday, Friday, uh, not Saturday, Sunday, but Monday, um, we'll, we'll be able to put something together for the CRC and members of the planning board who are available could listen in on that meeting. And I think we'll We'll be further down the road than we are than we are right now, but um, I think we've gotten some valuable input to help us move forward. Yeah, and for for purposes, the agenda for CRC, just so people know, um, is fairly busy. Um, but the the planned timing would be for the work plan to come to discussion approximately an hour into the meeting. So around three o'clock right now. Um, so if anyone is interested, the meeting starts at two, Com comprehensive housing policy discussions will encompass approximately the first hour of the meeting a little bit more. Um, if, if people are interested in the zoning work plan discussion, it'll probably not occur till three o'clock at the earliest. Um, for how the plan is going, um, the agenda planning is going for that, um, for those interested. Any other further discussion? Shalini. Um, I would just like to offer to the planning department staff, uh, what can we do to support you in doing your work in terms of the planning board, in terms of the CRC folks? What can we do to, what would be most useful from us coming to you. Why don't Rob and I think about that in the next few days and we'll get back to you about that, but thank you for the offer. Thank you. And I had one other question, which is probably a stupid question, but it's also because I'm new to this work and also because I've never attended too many planning board meetings. But what are the discussions happening in the planning board meetings about zoning right now? That would really help me understand also like what are you all talking about and then what is our overlap and what is the redundancy and what could we each be doing so that it's more complementary and not redundant. I'm going to go to Jack and Maria. I believe most of that discussion has been happening in zoning subcommittee if I'm correct. So Maria, do you want to summarize a little bit about what the subcommittee has been discussing? Sure. I'm um, okay. Um, uh, let's see. We were given from Chris the first two items on the CRC uh, priority list one, and it was we just start with BL footnote B, and I think it's not necessarily we found out it's not necessarily about removing. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, putting BL in footnote B, but the goal is more housing in BL. Um, and then the other item we've been looking at is um, the impacts of uh bringing footnote m um 
Oh, I think I reversed it. Getting rid of footnote M. That's right. Um, and we literally, it was the tip of the iceberg. We just got, you know, a good handle on what is currently allowed and what is sort of all these different sort of in worst case scenario versus, you know, maximum build out versus um, a few little tweaks. So those are the only two items we've touched on. And um, we haven't discussed it at all with planning board, I think. Um, but uh, just from last night's zoning subcommittee meeting, it just showed me how useful it was to have the planning staff, uh, Chris and Rob, in active discussion with us. Um, it immediately made the discussion take right turns that I would not have thought that it would have gone. And so that um, really should be considered moving forward, that it's not like committees all talking amongst themselves and then suddenly the planning staff, you know, um, folds in. So um, I'm not sure how that divides up work, but I, I hope this work plan, this miracle work plan explains it all. So <laughs> see you next week. Jack, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> I, again, I think, I think I, I love the, the, how things kind of get talked, like uh, Doug mentioned that things this, the rapport is, is really good within that zoning subcommittee. And if we can just capture that within our planning board meetings, I, I don't know why we can't, you know, spend an hour or two hours and do the same. Um, you know, for, for, from efficiency standpoint, especially where we don't have a lot of project uh, review uh, items, you know, in front of us uh, at this time. So, uh, but, you know, it sounds like Chris and, and Rob will, will come up with some sort of uh, uh, proposal and, and I guess we go from there. Thank you. Doug. Yeah, I, I would also like to add that the predominant conversations in the planning board over the last, frankly, six months have been about the 40R proposal. And we abruptly tabled that when we received direction from CRC and town council to start to look at these other zoning priorities. Thank you for that update, Doug. Um, with that, we are going to go to a mini public comment session because there has already been public comment. I'm gonna ask everyone to limit their comments to two minutes instead of three, since um, we've already had one public comment session. So Pam, I know I'm gonna need your help here. Okay, um, so uh, Kathy Kath Kath Shane is first. Is first. Yes. All right, hi Kathy. Hi, um, and I think I can do it in less than two minutes, but I'll try not to speed read. Um, I thought this was a great meeting, um, and I just want to go back to the substance on the work plan and a couple comments. Um, one is on the word design, um, and it seems to be thought of, Chris, when you talked about it as a big consultant project that we have to go out and get something extra, which maybe to redo design everywhere we would. But I think if you start to focus on any of the zones, so if it's the BL zone, you can think about what, what's it going to look like and what kind of design features. So Dorothy's backyard, front yard, setbacks um, could be part of that. It doesn't have to be big design. It can be neighborhood design. What's the look and the feel of the neighborhood? Um, and I think that's particularly important when you start talking about duplex, triplex, quadruplex, whatever townhouses. And I've seen it in other zoning codes. They just say, what do we want these things to look like? You know, front yards, backyards, porches. Secondly, um, I can't find the word sidewalk in our zoning code. Um, and one of the things that does make neighborhoods and communities, particularly as they get more dense, is the inability to walk and walk safely. I know when the sidewalk was put up on Pine Street up here in North Amherst, um, people said they started meeting their neighbors because they walked on the sidewalk and they would meet their neighbors. You couldn't walk on the street because it's really a heavily trafficked street. So to whatever extent we can on some of these neighborhoods, cottages, one of them, when I walk there, there are no sidewalks and people walk in the street now. If you put a lot more cars in it, we need to think about where people are gonna walk. So that means think about the setback design. Um, I think when you come back to us with this work plan, what I'm hoping is you will do, will have done interactive work 
at the staff level. So it's not just adopt these, but really say, what does it look like in a 3D way? I know your staff, Chris, can do that. Um, so these lot sizes that we've seen that zoning subcommittee has done, done, what does it look if you build that out? And then the last is just a pure question. When we talk about supplemental dwelling units, there's an a, a accessory development Develop dwelling unit that's in the same law that Mandy talked about. And it set a statewide standard for what these are. And it's 900 square feet or 50% of the width of the dwelling unit, the lesser of the two. So if you have a small primary unit, say a thousand square feet, it could only be 500 square feet. And my impression is that has to be statewide. So I don't know whether we come in and do our own versus we say, take a look at what the state has done. So that's just a comment at the end. So it's think of design in small, not just we come wait to the end and do a big design, but as we're looking at a zone and talking about more housing, what do we want to look like? Don't forget sidewalks and do please do do the interactive, including interactive mixed use and, and apartments. Part of the people reason people are fleeing to mixed use is because they can't. There is no definition of what it is. So the two interact with each other. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, next up is gonna be Michael Greenbaum. Hi, Michael. Michael, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I have lots of thoughts about the organizational relationship things you're talking about, but they tend to go back to the charter. So maybe I'll save them for the time in which you go into your charter review some, some way down the road. Uh, my one substantive point is that I have opposed thinking about the Chapter 40 R overlay for downtown because I really have never thought of downtown as a neighborhood. I have thought of downtown as the common inheritance of all of Amherst and even surrounding areas. And therefore I'm opposed to increased residents downtown. Although I am very much in favor of thinking of chapter 40 R in terms of village centers. So there was a comment earlier this evening about thinking about the village centers and downtown in much the same way. And I would be very happy if that were not the case, if we could rethink downtown as our common property and think of its commercial establishment, which I think has suffered quite a bit recently and entertainment and culture and those things, not residents. So that's one point. The other point, thinking ahead to, to the zoning bylaw, seems to me a well-written zoning bylaw should not have footnotes. Footnotes should be reserved for changes that either are mandated by the state or that are about subsequently down the line. And particularly uh, footnotes that suggest exemptions to the bylaw that they are attached to. I would rather have a much, I would rather have a bylaw that includes the flexibility where you want the flexibility in the body of the bylaw. It seems to me it's, it's a very complicated and not a very happy situation when the footnotes uh, sort of say, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. And that's the way I suspect they are often read now. And uh, it seems to me it's important to preserve the difference between site plan review and special permit, although I wish the names were more different so that people would not get confused by them. And to have something akin to the relationship between the planning board and the zoning board remain. I think separation of powers is a very important thing at every level of government. I think it's important for amity and for collaboration between these boards, but they should have very different purposes. And I think the distinction is a very important one for the town. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. M Maura. Hi, Maura. Maura, can you unmute yourself? I think you have to allow her to talk. I thought I had. Yeah, I, she is able. 
because the only option I have is disable. Hmm. So. Could you ask her to unmute? Yes. That's one of your options. Yes. And Maura, can you hear me? If you can, can you unmute please? So Maura just unraised her hand. Janet is unmuted. Can we mute Janet again? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna go to Pam and then we'll see if we can get Maura working again. So and Pam- I think, I think I just got unmuted, correct? You are. Yeah. Okay. You are, everything was going so <laughs> Thank quick. So Pam, you are able to speak. It was while you were talking to Maura, so I wasn't sure if it was me or Maura. I know. <laughs> Um, a couple comments on sort of the organization and structure of your of your collaboration. Um, the first point is when I go to a planning board meeting, I would look at their agenda and there was nothing besides uh, zoning amendment priorities work plan on the agenda tonight. So it, it too took me by surprise that you might, and maybe not at this hour, get, delve into the, the uh, um, footnote B. Um, if, if in your organization of um, rolling the zoning subcommittee into the, the weekly or, or bi-weekly planning board meeting, it would seem very appropriate to list it as a joint meeting of the planning board and zoning subcommittee so that people were aware that there was going to be this working sec session uh, during that during that meeting. Um, I find the, the collab, it, and it has to be a collaboration of town staff and zoning subcommittee because that is in fact where the nitty gritty gets discussed. And you've got to be able to go back and forth and ask questions of each other to probe and understand the ramifications. I totally understand that 99% of the people that are currently on the planning board have actually not dealt with a whole lot of uh, zoning in the past, and it is a learning it is a learning process. And I absolutely commend you for getting up to speed by getting in there and dealing with the details. That is how you learn to do it. And so I appreciate having um, and seeing that 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 growth of understanding because, in fact, the suggestions for zoning changes. Uh, have some pretty significant ramifications. And I think the town simply needs to be able to weigh what those impacts are and, and approve or disapprove of them. Um, I think that's, that's all I really need to say, but um, I, I do appreciate, and I, and I would hate to, oh, the other thing is that the CRC to me, and I'm gonna make sort of a corporate analogy. I see the CRC as a subset of the town council, and it really should be functioning at sort of an executive level. It's kind of like Eisenhower saying, I want to, you know, I want to capture, you know, town X in, in Morocco, and the people on the ground sort of help make that happen. I don't really feel like CRC ought to be weighing in on every single zoning subcommittee meeting, um, unless you're there as sort of a, a bystander as we are in the in the town, um, your role is to kind of set a direction. And these the staff people, the zoning subcommittee, the planning board are all out there working to try to help formulate stuff. But it, I, I would find trying to attend a meeting with 12 people. I found it very frustrating tonight to to attend a meeting with 12 people and not get a word in edgewise. Um, but that's maybe just my personality. Anyway, smaller is better. And um, if, if the zoning subcommittee can get rolled up officially into the planning board conversation, that would be better than losing it altogether because I think it plays a key role in, in helping formulate the discussion. Thanks. Thank you, Pam. Um, Pam, can we figure out a way? Field Sadler, can we figure out a way to uh, get Mora in? 
We now have a new option for Mora, which is allow to talk. So we're going to try. Hi, Mora. I got it now. We got it. Hey. <laughs> okay. right. we, we can hear you, Mora. Um, I want to say that I have a lot of reservations about letting the planning staff do what the zoning subcommittee is doing. Not that they couldn't do in, as good a job or maybe even better, but it's done behind closed doors. And it was it would be much nicer in the zoning subcommittee, people are given an assignment, they do the assignment, they present it, and then, well, Chris or this last meeting, Rob was there too, um, brought up some other points about it. And it was, I think it was better for everybody. And I don't, I think if the planning staff just works on things and then presents it at the end, we don't get that give and take. Um, and I really worry about bringing the zoning subcommittee into the planning board meeting because even without a lot of projects, uh, the planning board meeting still seems to take two or three hours. And I don't think we'd get to those topics. And in, in as much of depth as it is at the zoning subcommittee. So sorry, Maria, I don't agree with you. And I think a meeting this size is really pretty unproductive to actually getting detailed works, work done. It's okay for discussing the broad topics, but not for looking at the details. Thank you for that, Maura. Um, with that, um, oh, we got two more. Please keep your comments to two minutes and then we're gonna close this up with the end of these two more. Ira. Hi, Ira. Hi, how are you? Um, I just want to appreciate everyone who is now putting an accent on uh, hearing from the public what we want as a town and what we are concerned with might be the repercussions of just removing this footnote. You know, it seems like such a, an innocent thing to do, um, et cetera. And also I just wanna weigh in on keeping the zoning and planning separate. Um, just to repeat what Michael Greenbaum said, separation of powers, but also there's just obvious different styles that the discussions are having just based on what you're saying. And I think just mixing them into one big bowl is gonna just kill everything that you are saying is what helps you think these things through. Um, so thanks so much. Thank you, Ira. Hilda. Hi, Hilda. Hi, I just wanted to add that I was really pleased with the zoning subcommittee last week. I thought a lot was accomplished and a lot was discussed in, in real day. And I would hate to see it lost. The one thing that I wanted to say that in 40 years of observing planning and zoning board meetings, first for the League of Women Voters and now for the Indy. For the first time in 40 years, I have seen the planning board actually doing some planning. And I wanna commend them for that. And I don't wanna lose that alone by mixing it in with a, with a regular planning board meeting where they're dealing with other issues. I, I really, want to commend you folks for finally doing some planning, which the planning board is supposed to do. And please don't lose it. Thank you, Hilda. Um, with that, I believe, Jack, I see one hand on our side. Jack, I'm about ready to, I think if there's nothing else. I'm ready to adjourn, but I'm not going to declare CRC adjourned yet, Jack. Okay, so I, I with with that said, I was wondering if we could do like a straw poll amongst the planning board because we have this, you know, we have these goals presented to us from town council. Um, we have, um, you know, a fairly tight schedule, it seems like for February, March. And I was just wondering if we do a straw poll for Chris and, and uh, Rob's information because they're going to recommend to us what they think should happen 
but if we met weekly uh, on Wednesdays, you know, versus bi biweekly. And I'm wondering, you know, how that would work with everyone's schedule. I think it's good for me uh, in general, but that would facilitate, I think, um, you know, combination of the, the, the zoning subcommittee items within the planning board. So I'm just throwing that out there. And, and uh, is that, you know, is that a fair thing to? So, so before I adjourn, because once I adjourn, I think that ends the item for all of us <laughs> because yeah. it was a joint meeting. So I will not adjourn yet um, with that request from the planning board chair. Um, I would suggest if that straw poll is taken and I'm happy to call on each planning board member at the request of the chair to do that, um, that the suggestion from given the conversation I've heard is that not every meet week have maybe one week devoted to the non zoning discussions and another week to devoted to zoning discussions because that would give Chris and Rob more time to potentially um, if that's a consideration. Yeah, that, I would put that good. out as a potential option as you're thinking about this and for members to think about. Um, Johanna, before I do a straw poll, if people are willing. Johanna. Thanks for the time. Um, my question is, are you thinking every Wednesday ad infinitum or every Wednesday for like February and March while we work through the zoning bylaw and then we would go back to bi-weekly? That's my understanding. It is like, because I, I, I know that town council is wanting to get some resolution on the top priorities there. So uh, I, it's a temporary thing that we would, you know, meet weekly. And I'm just wondering if planning board members, uh, if that's an option. And, and then certainly that would, that would, uh, you know, incorporate the, the zoning subcommittee and, you know, you know, being on, it would eliminate the zoning subcommittee, but incorporate it within regular planning board meetings because we're meeting more frequently. Uh, it just seems like there's some urgency that, that we resolve some zoning priorities. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there. Tom. And it would only be too, you know, like, for, like February, March. Uh, and just a straw poll. And I don't know if Chris, do you think that is something that would you would entertain or, or is that crazy? May I speak, Mandy? Yes. Um, from my standpoint, meeting every week with the planning board would be, um, I could do that as long as we don't also have zoning subcommittee meetings. So if that's the decision you're making, um, I think we could make that work. Tom. Sure, I was gonna agree. Um, I, I think that meeting every week, you know, right now we'd be meeting every week as a zoning subcommittee. I think if we were able to commit that time and we could actually carve that time out of every, um, planning board meeting, I think it would be useful and productive to have the other two members participating in those meetings as well. So um, I'm all for consolidating those two into um, just the planning board meetings, but uh, doing it weekly and making sure we carve out the time to do the work we need to do. I believe there is Andrew, Maria, Doug and Janet that haven't commented yet on Jack's thoughts. Um, Andrew. Uh, I, I, I'm fine with it as well. I think like right now we're meeting the subcommittees meeting every week and the planning boards meeting every other week. So we would be taking a meeting out of the schedule um, uh, in terms of like the, the night commitment. So I'm, I'm in favor of that. Um, I think relates to me sort of the, the, the advantages are we get the other two planning board members in. And then I think as long as we've got um, support from Chris and, and company, um, I would I would certainly advocate for that. Uh, thank you, Doug. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm fine with that in general. Uh, 
I happen to have a half hour obligation next Wednesday evening, but I could, I may be able to move that and uh, otherwise I'd just duck out for 30 minutes. But beyond that, I'm pretty available. Thank you, Maria. Um, I think I'm available. I just want to make sure if, uh, if every other planning board meeting is the zoning subcommittee meeting, is that what you're proposing so that every first and third Wednesday is a planning board meeting with no zoning stuff. And then the second and fourth are the zoning subcommittee meetings. And that way, Chris and Rob can uh, have time to, I, I guess I, I, I would like to see their work plan first, I guess, before we commit to anything in case, you know, they need more time than every two weeks to help with the research so but otherwise I, I think I can swing that I just want to not commit to it until we know the work plan I think Jack's purpose oh Jack I won't put words in your mouth Jack <laughs> yeah I mean I, I I just want to throw it out there for Chris and Rob as an option and it looks like we're kind of good with meeting weekly and whether it's you know whether the focus each week is is on our normal you know project review versus um, you know zoning uh, you know bylaw topics is to be determined. But I feel like we all want to get something done um, given the town council's um, you know uh, you know interests you know during the, the next two months and sounds like we can do it so um sounds like you know it looks like there's some efficiencies here um but i i defer to chris and rob are going to tell us what they want to do and then and then we'll see what can happen you know after that but think did we hear from everybody the uh, only one we didn't from planning board is janet and doug i think raised his hand again yeah so janet if you've got anything and then doug so i could meet um every wednesday um and so I don't, i'm not sure my preference would be you know an hour and a half like maybe the first hour and a half on zoning issues and then regular meeting or what but i do think it's important that um we make it really consistent and signal to the public what we're doing. Um, and so maybe we should just list that as a joint planning board zoning subcommittee for that hour and a half to kind of force us into that structure. Um, so I'm fine with meeting weekly on that. And I, I, I you know, would like to work in a way that would really help the planning department work on stuff. And I think that back and forth will be good for us. I would like not to vote to kill the zoning subcommittee because it's not on the agenda. <laughs> And also it seems like it's been this very effective mechanism and way, and in, in a funny way, we're trying to get the vibe of the zoning subcommittee on the planning board. So I say, let's keep the zoning subcommittee on the back burner, see if the vibe can be extended. This might become too much and the meetings might become four hours. And we all know that last hour, a lot of us don't really function and stuff like that. So I'm fine with meeting weekly. I feel like we have to be clear about, you know, to the public and to ourselves, what, what, what our schedule is and what we're working on. Doug. And one other brief thought, which was uh, the zoning subcommittee typically takes its own minutes and the planning board has had Pam and Chris doing the minutes. So mm -hmm. going to weekly might uh, increase the staff obligations on minutes in a way that I just hope Chris will and Pam will think about while they're putting together the work plan. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I, I would just, from CRC's point of view, I would just add to Chris and Rob a suggestion of as you're putting together a work plan and thinking about what meetings might be discussed at what, um, given conversation today, think about when joint meetings between CRC and some subset or full planning board meetings would be most appropriate from your thinking of point of view in terms of discussion and all to maybe have a proposal from that point of view too for us to jump off with when we talk about it on Tuesday. Because um, mm. we would value your input on when you think a joint meeting would be most helpful to the planning department. Any final words on zoning priorities? Yes. 
Seeing none, I want to say thank you to the planning board for hosting us um, and for taking two and a half hours out of your meeting to host us and have this very valuable conversation. And I also want to say thank you on behalf of the full town council, I guess, um, for jumping right in <laughs> to talk about the zoning priorities that the town council has asked the town manager to do. And thank you to the planning department and to Chris and Rob in particular, but I know it's not just you two that are going to be dealing with this. It's your entire departments and all the staff at the department that don't show up at the meeting too that are dealing with it to, to help us figure something out with related to zoning um, and to everyone. Um, the rest of the CRC agenda is items not anticipated. We don't have any. Um, and with that, I just wanna say, I think CRC is looking forward to working with everyone to discuss zoning and planning in this town as we move forward over the next year. So thank you. And with that, I'm gonna adjourn the CRC portion of the meeting at 9, 11 PM. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pam. Welcome. Good night, Good night everyone. See you soon. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. That was All quick. right, so uh, we can move to um, old business, and we're the next topic is uh, zoning bylaw, site plan review, review criteria, and design guidelines, section eleven point two four one seven regarding minimizing intrusion of lighting, review and discussion. So I will certainly, you know, uh, I hand that over to to Janet and let her. Uh, Thank you. Her memo. It seems like we always have this later. We always try to get this early instead of later, but I, I do <laughs> very quickly. Um, so anyway, section 11.2417 was um, part of the Emily Dickinson permit hearing. And on that, the, the lighting was upcast on the buildings, down downcast on the light. The lights in the buildings were on till 10. And then I think the path went off at, you know, when the last soul left. And so during that discussion, members raised two, is two issues about the bylaw section. Does all lighting need to be downcast except for um, lit signs? And do all lights need to be turned off after business hours except for safety or security lights? And um, when I looked at the, um, the text of the section, it said the goal, of, of, the goal was to minimize intrusion of lighting and protect adjacent properties. And so, you know, and I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but so I looked at the legislative history and a, th a shout out to Hilda Greenbaum, who basically told me exactly the year to look at. Um, and from leading legislative history, it was very clear to me that all the lighting had to be downcast and turned off after business hours, except for the safety lights and the lit lights. Um, and that was, those two sentences were added in 2007 in Fall Town meeting. Um, it was a unanimous vote, which almost, I, I can't, that doesn't happen that often in town meeting, but it uh, did. When I was there. Um, and so the planning board member pr who presented it to town meeting um, said the changes were in this, for both special permit and site plan review criteria. And it this is intended to protect residential properties from light intrusion from commercial properties. So it directs that all exterior lighting be shielded and downcast as to prevent glare that interferes either with motorists of residential properties nearby or motorists or residential properties nearby. And it requires that lights be extinguished outside of normal business hours, um, except for safety and security. He said several times that the changes applied to all districts and applied to every zoning district for every use in town. Um, and he described it as changes to criteria, not to guidelines. And so, um, I read that as saying there's not exceptions and there's no exceptions in the bylaw or there's no of the magical footnotes. Um, and so this, these two sentences were added by unanimous vote of the select board, the planning board, um, the finance committee and the former commercial relations committee. And there was no discussion before the vote. So to me, that was the legislative history is pretty much O'Keefe. Um, and so, you know, so, you know, so that's the legislative history. And so I began to ponder this. I was like, what's the difference between downcast and upcast lighting? You know, and I, since I bird, I was thinking about if you were a bird, would that matter to you? 
And so I did some research on that. And it turns out that upcast lighting is particularly bad for birds, but it also is bad for mammals, insects, reptiles, and even plants. And that also includes night lighting in general. Um, it's worse in the spring, summer, and fall because obviously there's more insects and animals around and, and green plants. It affects their, you know, the migration of birds, navigation, um, the ability of animals to see, the timing of plants, like their, their internal timing can get um, um, kind of thrown off by night lights. Um, they can bloom at different times. The trees would, might shed their leaves early or late. And then animals, you know, maybe, you know, a little mouse going out at night might be eaten by a coyote because it's easily seen. And then it also disorients turtles. I mean, so anyway, so night lighting is not great. And I began to realize how much I admire now how dark Amherst is. When I moved here, I thought, my God, this is the darkest place I've ever lived. And so now I see the benefit of that. Um, another thing is if you have night lights on, lights at night, that's a use of energy that you don't need. And so, you know, I just wanted to present this to the board because to me, the section of, you know, the meaning of section 11.2417 is clear that all lighting must be downcast except for architectural signs and turned off when they're not needing except for safety. And um, this fits with the dark sky standards of the International Dark Sky Association. And I summarize that is, you know, put your lights on only when you need them, only the area that has to be lit, no brighter than necessary. Um, it's something like blue lighting was preferred, low level. Oh, minimize blue light emissions and use warmer colors and also shield, have them downcast and fully shielded. And so I just wanted to present that because I don't know if we're ever gonna run into this again. I know we have some buildings in town that have upcast lighting um, and probably if we talked to them, they'd be like, oh, we can change that. And I thought you can just put your lighting downcast on your building or on a tree or on a post or something like that. So that I think it's not a hard change to make or um, an adjustment to make. So that, that was my presentation. If anyone has questions or reactions or. Okay. Um, let me get my. Uh... Uh, Chris Brestrup has her hand raised. Yes, Chris. Um, I wanted to mention something that we did talk about at the public hearing, and, and it is the fact that the Emily Dickinson Museum is a nonprofit educational institution, and it's protected under Section 3 of Chapter 40A. Um, the specific section that I wanted to read to you says, no zoning ordinance or bylaw shall regulate or restrict the interior area of a single family residential building, nor shall any such res uh, ordinance or bylaw prohibit regulate or restrict the use of land or structures for religious purposes or for educational purposes on land owned or leased by the Commonwealth or any of its agencies, subdivisions or bodies politic or by a religious sector denomination or by a nonprofit educational corporation provided however that such land or structures may be subject to reasonable regulations concerning the bulk and height of structures in determining yard sizes, lot area setbacks, open space, parking, and building coverage requirements. So in other words, the planning board has discretion as to how much of the um, requirements in our bylaw that we would impose upon a nonprofit educational institution. And I think you did discuss this and you discussed it very carefully. And I remember um, going through the um, minutes of both meetings on October 20, 21st and November 4th. And these issues were brought up and it was um, noted that um, the Emily Dickinson Museum is uh, a special place in town and it is a nonprofit educational institution. I think Maria or somebody mentioned that it's a landmark. So I think this is a different kind of situation from um, if you know somebody had a commercial building and they wanted to light it in a similar manner. You might treat that differently. But I think the way you treated the Emily Dickinson Museum was within your uh, area of discretion, particularly because of um, section three of chapter 48. Thank you. So I don't, I don't want to revisit the old decision. I just wanted to present this information because I'm not sure, um, you know, I, part of it is just my, I was just brooding about animals and I just thought, how does it affect this? And I, I actually have become obsessed with downcast lighting and, and most, you know, you know, I have downcast lighting on my, my house. And so I think it would just be good to people to know and to understand the impact. 
you know, things like that. So also the poem was pretty, I mean, I just had a good chance to read some poetry. Any other comments? Seeing none. Um, so Jen, I know you put a lot of time into this. Um, if you wanna, you know, kind of restate anything. Um, I know that we all, or personally, I did not see, <laughs> Did, did not see the demonstration and we can talk about the Emily Dickinson uh, project now, correct Chris? Because it's been The decision no longer... has been filed with the town clerk. Yeah. So, oh, we're, yeah. so we, we can, can talk, talk about, about that particular yeah. case if you want to. But, yeah. but in this case, you know, we're the planning board and I just felt like we had, they, they had a demonstration and it seemed like, you know, the the, the knowledgeable <laughs> folks, you know, with on the uh, within the board here, uh, felt comfortable with what was you know demonstrated during that lighting period, um, and but you know I appreciate your 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 you know delving into this this particular subject and I, I think that we can take that yeah and 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 you know improve you know, sort of forward kind of thing yes yes so uh but this particular project I think was vetted you know heavily by our our you know planning board members and uh I appreciate the demonstration that the Emily Dickinson Museum you know put up and it seemed like Okay, well, we can do this, but I guess there's downcast, and then there's some sort of variable where not upcast, but you know, it seemed like the light was captured uh, by the building, did not escape the property, and that's that's why the board, you know, you know, approved it. But in general, we definitely want to be you know wary of this you know lighting you know bylaw and 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 understand what you know your concerns are so um any other comments from the board i see none okay um so, all right. Oh my gosh, uh, this this draft uh, going on to the next item, uh, B draft housing policy. May I say something about that? Yes. Um, so the CRC, I don't think they've really completed their work on this. They're looking for planning um, department input sooner than later, but um, I don't think they're looking for uh, planning board input necessarily until April. That's right. That 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 was my understanding, and that's why we haven't really kind of you know dove uh, dived into it. But um, it's something that we definitely want to pay some attention to, and you know provide our our comments on. So, um, is this uh, we're uh, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember now. Um, Mr. Is Marshall this topic? has his hand raised too. Yes, Doug. Yeah, I have a, you know, okay. So the end of April is the deadline. Do, is it your, uh, is it your preference that each individual planning board member submit individual comments or that we, you are gonna put this on the agenda of some of our meetings and we're gonna have general conversation, uh, which uh, Pam or Chris will summarize in minutes that's yeah so i'm trying to like it, i'm <laughs> trying to get my uh my focus here but yes we i think we all agreed that we were going to review this policy and that the and then i thought that we would be able to provide that during a future meeting 
and that you know Chris and Pam would collectively provide our comments within one document and provide that to CRC versus us individually providing comments you know as citizens to to the town council so does that does that sound reasonable Chris that you would you would kind of combine our comments but it wouldn't be like a single sort of vision from the planning board but it would be individual comments from the planning board members that you would provide uh, oh, after we have sufficient discussion I no, think we need to have some discussion. I would like you to have some discussion yes. among yourselves. You don't have to take a vote, but you know, you'll come with your point of view and present your point of view to your fellow board members. And then Pam and I will try to summarize what you've said and pass that along to the CRC. Yeah. That's, and, that, that would be my preference. And we would like vote, you know, you would have some document and we would just like the minutes, we would comment on what you, what you have, you know, uh, discerned from our from our discussions, um, but yeah. So I, I don't I don't expect us to have a a singular sort of uh, planning board recommendation. And, and from what I understood from our previous discussions, that we will have individual comments, but it would be provided. From the planning board with you know so say you know andrew andrew's concerns or this or that and then and then joanna would mm -hmm. you know and it just kind of so there'd be some some document that these are planning board comments you know but it would be member specific you know specific versus us trying to coalesce <laughs> uh you know um, Makes sense to me. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Janet, you have your hand up. Um, beating myself. So I, I think that's actually a very efficient way. So we get a chance to talk to each, amongst each other and don't have to come up with a synthesized statement. Would it be okay if I just wrote some more detailed comments separately? I don't want to under, because I might dig into it with the more depth than people anyone wants to know about. Mm -hmm. Except for maybe another person like another attorney like Mandy Jo. <laughs> so I I don't want to undermine the general thing. So is that do you think that's okay? I think yeah. it's okay. I think we would could just include it as a, an appendix or yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So um Topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. No topics. Okay. New business. We have none listed. Uh, any not anticipated? No, no. Okay. Um, can Chris, can I interrupt you there? There was that bill. Did you want to talk about that? The, oh, the house bill um, that we got from KP Law. Yes, we could do that. I think maybe Janet suggested that we do that, didn't she? Um, so we did get a, um, a summary of the um, House Bill 5250 um, from KP Law, and I sent it on to you all. Um, and essentially, what it does is, along with a lot of things about um, the budget. It uh, provides um, for certain types of zoning amendments to be adopted, certain types of zoning amendments having to do with housing in particular, to be adopted by um, a majority vote of the legislative body um, rather than a two thirds vote. So that would mean town meeting could adopt certain things having to do with housing by a, did I say, yeah, town council, um, by a majority vote. And um, I, I believe that also applies to um, special permits for things for, for applications related to housing that could also be granted by majority vote rather than a special, rather than a um, two thirds vote. What I'm not clear on is, and I think I'm right in this, I believe that the special permit is a discretionary permit 
and it would still be um, able to be denied. I believe that's true, although I have to check that out. Um, but that's in the nature of the special permit that you can deny it. So I think you either vote for these certain things by majority or you, you know, you can you can still deny it. Um, but we have to get a little bit more specific about this. Rob and I have to look at this more carefully and we probably have to talk to our, our town attorney, Joel Bard, about exactly what does this mean? And do we need to change anything in our zoning bylaw to um, accommodate this new law? So that's um, something that we will be investigating and coming back to you with um, what we hope are clear answers. But we just wanted to introduce the topic and um, I believe we've sent this summary to you. And if you had any questions, um, you could ask them and we could take them under advisement and get back to you with the answers. Thank you, Chris. Um, Janet, Janet has her hand raised. Oh, oh no. Okay. It's Just, residual. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. Uh, the Form A uh, subdivision uh, applications, any? Yes, we do have a Form A. And you got a map, a GIS map in your packets, which you didn't receive. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Pam can show you the, um, the location of the property. It's on Pomeroy Lane. It's just east of the, um, oh, this is, can you flip that around, Pam? So north is pointing up. No, I flipped it for this presentation so it matched the other one. Oh, well, it's easier to look at a GIS map if it's oriented with north going up. So um, what uh, this gentleman wants to do, a, a fellow, um, let's see, Michael Powell and his wife, Adriana. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. It's so ephemeral, isn't it? Um, there you go. Anyway, they own the property that's outlined in yellow here and it's, um, along Pomeroy Lane, right across the street from Pomeroy Court. So it's just a little bit east of the Pomeroy intersection that we'll be talking about, about the Mass Works project. Um, we're not talking about that tonight, but the town will be talking about that. And it's just east, east of Carriage Lane, if you're, if you're familiar with that subdivision down there. Um, so they own this big piece of property and what they'd like to do is be able to carve out a piece that encompasses the existing house which is where they live. And they want to be able to build a bigger house for their growing family. I think they have four children um, back on the back property here. So um, if Pam can show us the um, a and R map now, that would be helpful. And I see now why she flipped the well, other. I flipped it. Around. Yes. I thought I was so on the ball. In this case, <laughs> north is to the left. So um, what they're showing here is the property with the existing house in this square, this little square towards the front of the property. And oh. then they're showing a, um, uh, an access strip, which is 40 feet wide, and that's what's required. Um, and then they're showing that's the, the location of the house. The access strip is um, long, okay. yes, that's it, right. Uh, and the location of the new house is back there and they also wanna build a barn. So they're showing the building circle um, where they wanna put the barn. They're showing some, um, some setback information to, to prove that the new buildings will be um, appropriately located and, and won't, um, won't be against the setback lines. And so this is what they want to do. So if the board would, um, would agree I would ask uh, Mr. Jemsik to come and meet me at town hall to sign this plan. Um, the comments that we received from the town uh, engineer were that when the properties are eventually separated and one is sold, um, he would recommend that there either be a, an easement um, across the common driveway. <laughs> you can see that there's a common driveway on, on the north there. Um, or that the driveways be separated. So each house would have its own separate driveway. The way it's shown on this plan is that each house 
would have its own separate driveway, but there's a little piece of driveway connecting the two. So, mm -hmm. um, so either, and I've passed this information along to Michael Powell, that he either needs to grant an easement to um, the person who is going to buy the property or he would need to cut off that little piece of, of driveway. So do you agree, or do you have any questions? And then if not, do you agree that Jack can sign the plan? Oh, and by the way, I mean, meant to say this, this will be going before the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals is gonna look at a grading plan for the driveway and a grading plan for the area around the house. And it may get into um, the trees that might be removed if, if they're over six inches. Um, so the Zoning Board is gonna be looking at this carefully with regard to granting a special permit for a flag lot. But this is the first step when they separate the two properties. Any comment, uh, Doug? Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled on what basis could we object? Um, if you saw there was something here that didn't comport with your understanding of the zoning bylaw, um, <laughs> I think that would be a uh, cause for objection. And then we would go back to the applicant and say, you really need to get your surveyor to uh, look at this more carefully, but I've looked at it carefully. The town engineer has looked at it carefully and we don't see any, um, any issues with zoning. Uh, the flag lot needs to be twice the area of the required lot area in this zoning district. So the front portion of this lot is in the RN zoning district, which requires 20,000 square feet in lot area. And the rear portion um, for the flag lot would require 60,000 square feet because it's in the RO district and they have a total of 93,000 on the back lot and 28,000 on the front lot. So they, so they meet that requirement and they meet their frontage requirements. So I'm not seeing any problems with this, but um, it's really a case when Jack signs this, he's saying this does not require subdivision approval. That's why it's called ANR, subdivision approval not required. Well, I'm not gonna second guess you or, or Jason Steele. So um, I will uh, agree to the, the Jack signing. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, it looks, you know, looks good, uh, Tom. I was just gonna say that I, I approve you to sign it as well. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, okay, so I think we can, oh, Andrew? Yeah, I wasn't sure if you're doing a roll call, but I, I approve also. Okay. Uh, should we do a roll call, Chris? Sure, if you want to. Okay. Um, you need a motion. Yes. I move to approve the ANR just described. And a second. Second. Okay, Maria. All right, so let's go through. Maria? Approve. Tom? Approve. Andrew? Approve. Doug? I accept. Janet? I. <laughs> Johanna? I. And myself accept. So. Okay, thank you. Very good. Anything else along the lines of the Form A? Nope. Subdivision? Okay. Upcoming ZBA applications. Nothing to report, sir. All righty. Um, upcoming SPP, SPR, SUB applications. Not that I know of. All right. Uh, we can go on to the Planning Board Committee and liaison reports. Uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, um, nothing of note. I mean, I had an executive committee meeting. Uh, last Thursday, but again, nothing of note. Um, with regard to the CPA, Andrew? We had a meeting last Thursday and unfortunately I only made the tail end of it. Uh, we've got another one that we're, we're looking to schedule in February. We had just, um, in the portion that I was present for, we just talked about ways we might be able to um, standardize our evaluation and, and how we review the criteria consistently. 
So I think that that work will probably carry over into February as well. Um, they also were putting together a, a, a timeline of um, how we could uh, approach this work in a more you know, controlled manner um, rather than kind of like the hockey stick at the end of the year and, and how we might be able to solicit uh, more applications. Thank you. Uh, Doug uh, Marshall on the Ag Commission. Uh, we have not met, so no, nothing new. Great. Uh, Tom on the Design Review Board. Okay. Very good. Uh, and Chris, well, we, we already had the, the joint committee there, so I would think that we <laughs> be on top of everything there, but. Um, uh, and then the, also the zoning subcommittee. So uh, report of the chair, I have nothing to add. Or to staff. I have nothing to add. Great. So we can adjourn. What, 941 I have. Thank you Thank all. Everybody. And then I think we're looking for Chris, you know, to provide us with, with, a, with a schedule that we can, you know, do our best to help achieve the the goals that, that the town council has laid out. Mm -hmm. So let us know. All right, good. Thank All you. Right. Hey. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. All right. It's Doug.